I'm just going to tell you right now, I just feel a little discombobulated this morning. My pre-show ritual was all effed up because I did arrive late. Listen, I'm here in time for the show. I mean, I've been here for, you know. You weren't tw- late. Yeah. I was, I've been I here- was here at 545 and you were here. Is that late to you? Uh, I was here at five forty. Yeah, maybe I was, but still, um, I, 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 I'm rushed this morning. I don't feel like... Uh, Oh, 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 oh. Is my mic sound? Oh, that was a that was a wet one, man. Are you sick Ew. or something? No, or? I, I just sneezed. I, I just oh. caught a whole bunch of dust or something. I'm not Gross. sick. I don't know. No, no, no. What's and your headphones are all like jacked. What's my going, mic is all what, jacked. No, no. Your mic's what, what, really. Does what, it sound okay? Maybe yeah. my headphones are jacked. No, your your microphone's fine. Your your headphones. What's going on around here? I don't know. Listen, I'm just. I'm discombobulated. I had, I had a uh, an exit the house uh, driveway technological issue. I I had driveway exiting issues today. Fester, now your your so, headphone is all cock. Did you break them? Well, last week we did a stunt. We did the uh, chicken. The, no, the, the uh, eyes. The eyes. Oh yeah, yeah. What? Uh, Froggy did his. Oh, Sorry. Eclipse. Hal Herman, dude, you, use your words. Eclipse tips. All, you, the, all you, you other ass heads are using them. So use your words. All right, I quit. Stop. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. Last week we did the uh, Hal Herman eclipse suggestions. Yes. Yeah, no. Right. No. No. We had the Hal Herman eclipse viewing safety tips. Yes. 
Thank you for using your words. I know. I was trying to so, get you to use your words. So when I was blinded with the mustard and the barbecue sauce. Yes, and the coffee beans. I made my way back to my mic position. By the and, way, that's the funniest freaking video. That That's very funny. And uh, I believe that was a best of video of the day that was posted. Yes, go ahead. And I made my way back to my microphone position, and I stepped on my headphones, and lefty over here works fine, but righty is all... Why did that always happen to your headphones? Because I buy $20 <laughs> headphones. Yeah, because you buy crap. I want to invest in you, better. You, you see the headphones that I'm using? The, the headphones that I'm using, I want you to take a look. I date my headphones. So I oh, know. We're just taking I, the dinner. Yeah, I don't want to know about your social. <laughs> no, no, habits. no, no. That's the dude. I put the date of in service on my cell phones. Mm. Yeah, right. Like, like I, the... So if I if I hang on, stop. If, if I take if I take my headphones off, oh my head. It, look at this. It says uh, twelve fifteen. Like it's a lunchbox. I, I, I put. I, sorry, sorry for the uh, feedback, but I, I was taking my headphones off and they were near the microphone. But. Uh, my headphones say 12:15. I put these headphones in service in December of 2015. I put these headphones in service over nine years. It'll be 10 years right. uh, in uh, what? Uh, you know, a, 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 almost nine years ago, oh. I put these in the service. So, uh, right? It, it this, is. yeah, this December, it'll be nine years. So it's. Uh, Eight, eight years and change. Yeah, almost eight and a half years. And you can't keep a pair of headphones. Well, first of all, I'm using, you know, high quality cost Pro 4 AA headphones. You're using absolute, like, Amazon Basics, you know, crap. Okay. I mean, those, that's the same line from Amazon Basics as the, the doggy poop bags that you buy. <laughs> He's I'm, ser- never I'm serious. Invested. He's never invested in a good pair, yeah. like ever, why? ever, yeah. ever. Yeah. Give, me, give me one reason why I should invest in, in more expensive headphones. Well, because you will get longer life out of a well-built, more expensive headphone unless you put your full body weight yeah. on them and, and step on them. I think this is the best option for him. If he's going to step on them, I, I don't think yeah. like, they what? can be the nicest ones. And if he's going to step on them, they're going to break. Those are $20 headphones? I think they've raised the price to $28. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll tell you, you know. And also, I once listened to those things. They sound like absolute ear ass. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. That's they sound, like they sound awful. Let's not judge what I'm into. Ear ass is a... <laughs> ear ass. <laughs> it's a niche. <laughs> it's a, it's a right. Yeah, so I had, I had driveway exiting technological issues this morning. So I had a... Stick around with uh, my gate and everything. It's just a. Uh, you couldn't get out of your own house? No. <laughs> <laughs> your gate was broken. I had, had some issues this morning. I so, called you and you sounded discombobulated. Yeah, well, I was I was late. You called me and I should have already been here five minutes or six minutes earlier. You called me at 5 33. Thir- 33, was it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I should have been here at 5 28. Yeah, I, I should. So I'm. I'm just. I, I feel discombobulated this morning. I'm not fully set up over here. So listen, is the show going to be affected? Mm. Absolutely, it's going to suck <laughs> wind today. I'm telling you. No, I'm kidding. No, the show's not going to be affected. But you know, I just you kind of get into a routine. You know, you become a creature of habit, and I just like to have all my stuff all in a row. And I don't. It's going to take me a little longer to get everything set up this morning. Anyway, busy, uh, jammed up show. Oh, I discovered something yesterday on 275, and I'm trying to think. I, I don't think that I had seen this because it was you know closer to Fester's house, 275 North. And I discovered something yesterday. I'm like, oh, my God, this is a mess. Fester, I have this on the list to talk about uh, you know, right off the bat, and I'll probably mention this later on, but that crazy jog on 275 North just before Hillsboro? Yeah, that's ha- a very aggressive turn in the middle of the interstate. Who decided that was a good idea? That is, oh my God, somebody swerved into my lane yesterday. It was like, oh my God, son of a God! <laughs> So I'm um, I'm heading up to uh, Audi Tampa, yeah, and Maserati Tampa and Porsche Tampa uh, yesterday. One of our sponsors here on the show, and I was bringing back the Audi, and I was picking up a Maserati yesterday, and I'm on 275 North, and just before Hillsboro, you've got that 
crazy jog, and it is in aggressive. That's the yeah, best way to put really it. Really dramatic turn on an interstate that you're traveling I'm 85 the, miles I'm an hour. I'm in the middle. Well, you shouldn't be driving 85 there, but I'm in the middle lane, and the guy in the left, he comes into my lane and almost like crashes into my uh, Audi Tampa, you know, demo loaner car, uh, and I'm like, what the. And, and, <laughs> What's going on here? I'm like, who is the traffic genius that made that crazy northbound 275 just before Hillsboro crazy aggressive jog? They couldn't do that a little more subtly? Nope. Only one way to do it, and that's the way. I know they're doing construction, and they're widening, and they got all that crap going off on the right, but come on. That is dangerous. How many accidents have occurred because of that thing? Involving me, none, but it's still early. That is insanity. That is interstate ins. Hang on a minute. Interstate insanity. They gotta fix that. That's it. Was gonna be like that for years while they do all that construction. Dangerous. It is dangerous. You know what? I'm gonna address this again later on because I, I almost got into an accident yesterday. Uh, I'm in my lane, but the guy to the left of me, he was also in my lane before you knew it. <laughs> the hell? All right, 608, just getting rolling here on the MJ Morning Show. Let's grab Pat with traffic. Hey, Pat, any accidents at that crazy...
second. Welcome, everybody, to the early listeners. I'm so thankful that you've joined us this morning. 6.20 here on the MJ Morning Show. What is this? Uh, Wednesday morning. You know, a little later on, a little more eclipse aftermath. Just a few little items which, uh, I'm not going to bore you with crap. I know that a lot of people just, uh, you know, eclipse the hell out. But yeah, I, I'm eclipsed out. Are you eclipsed out or you eclipsed the hell out? Both. All right. Well, anyway, why does your mic sound like, it sounds like you're like very whispery, like a, is Both, your, I don't know. Yeah, just no. It sounds like you're whispering over there. All right. So, um, no, a couple of additional, just lingering eclipse issues, but I promise they're not going to bore you and they're not going to suck. Just uh, a couple of updates and just uh, some interesting stuff on the way. Anyway, I raised a, a question at the beginning of the Cindy Lauper song. I raised a question that I feel like I'm becoming more combobulated, and I, I wondered, is that a freaking word? Because if you are discombobulated, Fester, I, I'm looking at you, and it looks like you've got your challenge, you know, with your headphones just all flopped off to the side. I just a bit said, touched. What? Like, like, what kind of? What do you mean? When you no, say no, it I, I, no. I'm, I'm just saying, it looks like that you're technologically challenged oh, over there, right. <laughs> mentally challenged. No, well, that, <laughs> well, well, that, says well, that goes without saying. <laughs> yeah, you're mentally challenged. <laughs> Fester's right headphone is. Just all cranked off, and it just it just uh, it just looks weird. All right, because Fester, you stepped on your headphones. Yes, but when we were doing the Hal Harmon Eclipse yeah. suggestions, right? I stumbled over to my mic position, and my mic my headphones fell off the <laughs> counter onto the floor, and I stepped on them, and I broke I broke the whole side. The whole that reminds me. Did you see the video of the guy who jumped over the fence and went to? encounter an elephant and the elephant stepped on him immediately Ooh. is this recently yeah i, I heard know. about this is I this on one it. of your youtube channels oh, yeah yeah a animal attack hold on what happened uh, an elephant step i saw a recent video where an elephant a bunch of people were on safari and i think it might have been zimbabwe or something or uh, somewhere in south africa yeah that's what started my uh, black hole into Elephant attacks. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, that one. In the last, like, week or so. Lady. Yeah, there was, like, an 85-year-old, I think, American woman. Did she die? Unfortunately, I believe so. It, it, did we, I think she took a tusk to the head. Uh, I mean, this is awful. I saw the video, yeah. uh, uh, I think, late last week. Yeah, it was last week. Was it? Hey, Fester, look this up. Elephant attack, uh, Africa, American woman. Don't go on safaris. Watch American oh. tourist killed after aggressive bull elephant attack that five was days it. ago. Five days, exactly. That was it. And yeah. I, I, mean, I feel awful, but bring up here. Yeah, click on that so I can get the story, not a YouTube video. Yeah, this is terrible. From, uh, let's see, the Dateline is Johannesburg. An elephant attack that left an American woman dead in Z uh, Zambia. Not Zimbabwe. Zambia was captured in harrowing cell phone video over the weekend. Uh, over the weekend, the clip shot by tourists in Zambia's Kafu National Park begins inside an open safari vehicle during a game drive. In the distance, a large bull elephant can be seen coming toward the vehicle. The occupants of the vehicle cannot be seen in the video clip, but someone is heard saying, oh, my goodness, before a man says, it's coming fast. Oh, God. The vehicle stops, and then another voice, presumably the game ranger, tries to ward off the elephant verbally. What? Elephant, stop. Hey, man, chill. A large pachyderm hooks its tusks into the vehicle and rolls it several times. The video is insane. The elephant, I mean, picks up this heavy safari vehicle and just tosses it like a toy. Just with ease, he picks it up. Oh, my God. It's crazy because it's not like the safari truck was coming after the elephant. The no. elephant just pursued the, the yeah, safari Don't go gang. on safari where there's animals around. No, that's why you go on safari. Hold on a minute. No way. Family members confirmed that Gail Matson, a 79-year-old uh, Minnesotan from Minnesota. Oh, no. Minnesota. Oh, no. From Minnesota, 79 years old. She was killed in the attack. Terrible. Awful. I feel... In the post on Facebook, Rona Wells said that her mother had died in a tragic accident while on her dream adventure. That sucks. Turned into a nightmare. That's like yeah. my buddy's wife who got attacked by a hippo. Get out of here. Yeah, I told you that story. No, they you were on did. the news. You, no, you yeah. didn't. No, there was a there's a Tampa Bay resident who was attacked by a hippo like ten years ago. Really? Yeah, she almost got killed. Yeah. Well, hippos, believe it or not, 
the fact is that more people die from hippos in Africa than any other animal. But you're not allowed to talk about their death because of the hippo laws. <laughs> Do you know, a, that's good. It's a uh, hippo it's violation. A, it's a good one. That's a really funny joke. <laughs> I mean, it's the hippo laws. Big, big, big it's, hippo, it's, hippo violation. It's not a laugh out yeah. loud funny no. joke, but it's like an internal, like, yeah. wow, that was funny. Then uh, HR is going to get involved. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, how do we start this? Oh, because, well, I, because you're calling me an elephant because I stepped on my headphones. Yes. I, didn't, I didn't call you an elephant. For I, am. I think for all you might have. But prior I to that. I would not be as insensitive as that, yes. <laughs> prior to that, you brought up something really important. I've never thought about this. Yeah. And, and now that you're on the cusp of saying this, I think this is going to be life-changing for me personally. Ooh. The word, combobulate. Yeah. Didn't know it was a word. Is it a word? I Because I looked it up in... The Merriam-Webster Dictionary, I don't see it. Yeah, the whole thing started with I feel discombobulated this morning because I had uh, I was challenged this morning in leaving my driveway. I had some technological driveway gate issues this morning, and I'm late. I'm like 15, 18 minutes late today. And listen, that kind of screws up my schedule. So I said I'm all discombobulated. And if I'm starting to put the pieces back together, if you're discombobulated, and that means, you know, out of sorts, you're confused, disoriented, if you're discombobulated, if I'm starting to get back to normal, am I becoming combobulated? And I tried to look up the word combobulate. It's such a better word than like, say I look at Fester and I'm like, Fester, get yourself together. Fester, combobulate yourself. That that word is like, the best Ooh. word ever. Yeah, like compose know. yourself. Yeah, combobulate. It sounds too much like combust. Combobulate. Uh, yeah, combobulate does not come up as a word in the Merriam-Webster online dictionary. I found it in Wiktionary. Uh, nah, nah, for that's whatever all, that, that's worth. That, that's made up crap. Wiktionary. Wik- Wiktionary. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. How about Wiktionary? It's all. It's a witch dictionary. <laughs> How about a Wiccan. Wiccan yes. Yeah. <laughs> combobulate yourself. No, I, I, I don't think that combobulate is a word. It but should be. But the dis, the dis should indicate if you're discombobulated that if you're normal, then you should be combobulated. Yeah, you I, should I just be able to remove the dis. I don't understand it. That doesn't make, from a, from a word standpoint, from an etymological uh, query, I'm uh, confusimulated, all right? I'm, a, I'm all confusimulated here on the MJ Morning Show. Uh, anyway, back to Safari for a second. And I, I had something completely different planned for this whole segment. But obviously that shot to hell. But Froggy, you, what do you say about you shouldn't go on Safari when there are animals around? That's the whole freaking point of a Safari. You just don't go on Safari. That's it. And while you're at it, don't go to Africa. That place sounds dangerous. <laughs> I mean, too many. Every I hear too many stories of people getting attacked by wild animals, the, hippos, elephants, snakes, right, lions, on. or other humans. I saw a video of a woman in a car, like you drive your car through the safari, Listen, and a lion grabbed her and dragged her out. I was watching The Price is Right yesterday. Me too. And one of the trips in the Showcase Showdown was a trip to uh, Mogadishu. Oh, wow. I'm sure. Yeah. And that person's going to get ripped to shreds. A trip to Mogadishu. And then on to Rwanda. Ooh. Where you will wander in Rwanda. Yes, all expense paid trip. This includes round trip air for from Los Angeles. No, no. There, there was, Rwanda's lovely this time of year. Yeah, even springtime in Mogadishu. Yeah, there was no, well, listen, Mogadishu, that's where the famous. Yeah. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Lion? What? No, Mogadishu. Famous event. You talking like mm. Black Hawk Down Yes, stuff? Black Hawk it's Down, like, Mogadishu, I, absolute I, I, fest. I and Rwanda, I, another I, famous I, event. Yeah. I don't yeah. know that I put Mogadishu yeah. and, and Black Hawk Down in famous event categories. That is a well-known, mm. tragic, Tra- famous okay, event. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in the same what? way that... All right. Yeah, I know it, what you're saying. It's a famous event. Okay, yeah. Anyway. It's, it's a famous event. Froggy, back to your safari bashing. Yeah, yeah. If you go on safari, make sure there are no animals around. Yeah, that's like the whale watching rackets over in the Pacific Northwest, where you go out for three hours and you just see water and no whales. You know, yeah, but no whales today. Uh, My in-laws saw lots of whales when they did it. Okay. Well, listen, it, it depends. The bottom line is, you go on safari to see the animals. Michelle and I, pre-kids, forget that. In 1998, pre-kids, Michelle and I went on safari. 
in Kenya and Tanzania, and it was phenomenal. Did you ride an elephant? No, we didn't ride an elephant, but we were in the Amboseli National Park, which is in Kenya, the southeastern part, Amboseli, and you can even see Mount Kilimanjaro uh, right on the border there with uh, uh, Tanzania, and Amboseli has tons of elephants, and we were in our uh, Land Rover uh, amid dozens of elephants, and it was inc- it was incredible. Michelle loves elephants. Like Michelle's favorite animal, elephant, loves them. And we saw that explains why her and Fester are so close. <laughs> what <laughs> we we saw little baby elephants to gigantic monster elephants. You see any baobab trees? It was fantastic. So I highly recommend Safari. In fact, one of the things that we were hoping to do, we just haven't done it yet, is I would like to do a family safari again all these years later with our kids. Are you nuts? Did you just see the video of the thing getting flipped? That is rare. Oh, yeah, it's rare. It it is rare. Why don't you go parachute jumping, too? That is completely rare. It does not happen very often. You've got millions that go on safari over the decades. Go bungee cord jumping. And an elephant attack where they flip a vehicle, it just doesn't happen very mm. often. I will Watch right? the video and tell yeah, me. I, I, took the back I lot. saw the video last week. Well, five days it. ago, I saw the video. Yes, Fester. You can go to Bush Gardens, get the back lot tour. Uh, anyway. I'm good. I don't, I don't even go, go to the Animal Kingdom safari. And those animals are fake. I'm telling you right Actually, now. Actually, they're real, I think. Yeah, they're I, real animals. <laughs> Uh, Disney actually has real animals. That yeah, have but they're real far away. They're behind a fence. I highly recommend Safari, and that's something that I would still like to do. I'd like to go back to Africa with Michelle and the kids. We were hoping to go with the kids like when they were teenagers, but, you know, that ship is, well, Julian is still 19. Julian turns 20 in July. What the hell is going on with the time here, man? You ever go anywhere close? I mean, like Key West or something? Everything's yeah. all far like, away. Like a weekend in Naples or something? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. I, Everything's I, I, so far. Yes. We've gone to like Captiva or Sanibel. Guys, okay? let's go to Istanbul. I, huh? What do you think? You know, we occasionally uh, we go to Safety Harbor, okay? Yes. Okay. All right. That's not exactly a <laughs> day trips that are. All right. Uh, 633 at the MJ Morning Show. Man, I, I had a whole segment planned there, and uh, obviously that uh, got kiboshed. Uh, but I am becoming more combobulated after my discombobulation earlier today. You're recombobulated. 6.33 at the MJ Morning Show. Early morons in the news next. Yes, a spectacular pile of morons next. Stand by here on the MJ Morning Show.
Sounds like very moronic news music, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think this make. Should we make this our permanent morons in the news musical open, or do you like the assortment of different musical bumpers? Disney. Welcome. Yeah, personally, I like the assortment. Yeah, if anyone remembers, that was from the old TV show. TV Nation. What? Yeah. It yeah. was a it was a kind of a quirky it was a Michael Moore thing. And you know, I'm not the biggest Michael Moore fan, but uh that music was pretty cool. All right, early morons in the news. And then Roxanne, we, we gotta get you to explain this whole okay, okay. buffet that you brought yes. in. Yes. I don't know. I, will. If, I don't know if we'll have time in this segment. But no. we, we've got a, I don't know, you, you've... I, I think I think I have an idea of how I'm going to okay. share. Because uh, when I was driving in, mm -hmm. you were causing my brain to fog over. And, yeah, I know I was thrown a lot at you. And, and nearly drive off the Howard Franklin Bridge. <laughs> That's what she uh, does. So early... <laughs> no, Roxanne brought, seriously, a veritable buffet in this morning. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll explain, yeah. we'll, we'll explain coming up. All right. 
Got a local moron in the news here. A Clearwater man threatened a construction worker with his finger gun. But then he grabbed a real shotgun. <laughs> Dude, you should have stuck with the finger gun or probably just avoided the whole situation altogether. Yeah, this guy's a bonehead. This guy was arrested Monday morning, threatened a construction worker who was working on a home across the street from where he uh, was, as according to uh, information from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Jason Tadell, is that like Tadell? Like ta-da. Ta-da. Uh, yeah, t- exactly. Uh, 45-year-old Jason Tadell Evans. This guy was on a bicycle <laughs> around 8.15 in the morning. The victim was a construction worker working on a house across from where he lived. And I guess this guy pulls up on a bike. Apparently, the Pinellas County deputies say that Evans, he first grabbed a stick and started swinging it toward the construction worker. I think it all stems from the fact that he was upset at the construction that was happening across the street where he lived. He then throws the stick on the ground after swinging it violently at the construction worker, then removes his jacket and then makes a finger gun (laughs) (laughs) and points it at the construction worker and then says, bang, bang. Uh, According to the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, uh, the victim is not an English speaker. All right, so... So he knows what bang bang means, though. Well... It's like an international language. He was trying to figure out what was this guy doing, and he's like, you talking to me? You know, so he's doing hand gestures, like, you know, pointing to himself, like... Uh, are, you, are you addressing me? He's with... trying to communicate to the guy. So then the sheriff's office says that Evans goes to his house across the street and then grabs a pump-action shotgun mm. from right inside his front door. And then he aims the shotgun at the non-English-speaking construction worker. Oh, he knew what that meant, though. What the hell? Did he uh, fire off any shots? Did he, did he actually hit him? Yeah, the victim quickly grabbed his cell phone, dials 911, and once he picked up the phone, I think that the perp, this uh, Jason Tadell Evans, <laughs> he realizes that, listen, I don't think he's, you know, calling Jimmy John's to place a sub order. Nope. You know? So he figures that he must be calling 911. So Evans, the guy with the finger gun, then the shotgun, he goes back into his house. Anyway, the police arrive, and it uh, turns out this Evans guy has a, a rap sheet that's pretty long. Started with a finger gun, progresses to a shotgun. Uh, anyway, uh, Evans has been arrested, and he's been hit with aggravated assault. Charges and also uh, with a lengthy criminal record and felony convictions, he was also whacked with a felon in possession of a firearm, which is a no-no. Yep. Yep. No. No. That's what got the old man killed in that movie when he went, get off my lawn. And then he gun pointed him with his finger, remember? Oh, uh, mm. cl- w- that old man. You mean Clint Eastwood? <laughs> yeah, he's a new actor. What's his name? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of him. He dies in that movie? Oh, boy, does he? I never saw it. He Get gets off shot my up. lawn. The gang shoots him like 500 times in front of his house. It's yeah. So, obviously, this guy Evans, he was upset at some construction issue across the street from him. Yeah. And, you know, the guy's right back in the slammer. So, apparently, he's he's no stranger to the slammer, this Evans guy. I gotta admit, what? I'm a finger gun guy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's I walk by, great. I was like, "Hey, man, how are you?" And I, I don't go bang bang. I go, 
Oh, you're oh, you're, oh that yeah. guy. You're, Ooh. A, you're a finger really? mouth clicker. Yep. Ugh. Oh yeah, finger mouth. Cl- oh, so you're like Stop. a. Sounds probably, like a, like you have a silencer on. I probably do that like twenty times a day. So no, yeah. no. If it's a silencer, you're not going to hear you're it. You're not even hear the click. You know, a, silence, like a silencer is going to be. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's weird. You could do it. You could do a little. A little. No, no, that's too aggressive. It's like. So you're you're a finger gun pointer mouth clicker. I'm a pointer clicker. This is what I do. I go like this. Bang, bang, you're dead. 50 bullets in your head. One here, one there. The rest are in your underwear. I, I don't do that. I just do. You guys ever did that? I did that. Yeah. I never heard that. Yeah, that's what? It's classic. And then you point at your boobs when you go one's here, one's there. And the rest are in your underwear? The rest are in your underwear. Somebody got shot 48 times in their crotch? Yes. I never heard that before. Bang, bang, you're dead. 50 bullets in, in your, your head. head. One here, one there. The rest are in your mm-hmm. Hold on. underwear. 50 in the head. Two on the nips. How many is in the crotch? 48. The rest. Well, they're all in the head. Don't ask questions. It's just a fun little song. <laughs> is, that, is that what's fun about shooting people? See? See how, see how innocent my is now? I hate it. Stop doing it. How did I miss that little schoolyard little rhyme saying when I was in school? Because Maybe it was you, a Florida thing. Yeah, You didn't go to, like, school with the Traficantes and stuff. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good... Jesus. Oh, oh, I, I, you know what? See, mine was different, Froggy. Mine was like this. <laughs> bang, bang, you're dead, 50 in your head. One is red, one is blue. The rest are full of chicken poo. What? That's the one I did. Because your, your sound. Oh, I like that one better. What, 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 where are you guys coming up with this stuff? <laughs> the first part of yours sounded familiar, but mine didn't go in the, you know, butt and the boobs. You would threaten your friends with. <laughs> Chicken crap laced bullets. I remember. Oh. I remember. Uh, you know, K I S S I N G. You know, sitting in a tree. Yeah. First, First comes, comes love, love then comes, comes marriage. marriage, then comes baby in the baby. In the baby. Yeah, that's what I remember. Mm-hmm. That anyway. one. I've never heard of that. All right, six. Okay, for right. Six fifty at the MJ Morning Show. Little dose of early <laughs> morons in the news. Uh, oh, I got a story about tip culture is just totally out of whack. Hey, you know the story that I was supposed to do like. Uh, 30 minutes ago that we got all discombobulated on. Uh, we'll get to that. I've got a weird sex story. I'll, I'll make sure it's like G-rated or, you know, PG, but th- just a weird, weird sex story, which we'll get to, among other things, next here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. Hey, I just...
Morning Show. Cash Kitty on the way at 8 o'clock. You know, some people were having trouble with the texting. It was not everyone. It was like just some individuals were having trouble with uh, the Cash Kitty and texting the keyword. That has been solved. So the technological quagmire, if you had any issue with texting that keyword for the Cash Kitty for the 1000 bucks. At 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m., that little uh, technological uh, issue has been rectumfied. Mm. Yes, to totally rectumfied. Oh. <laughs> you really know how to gross out yes. fixing something. Yes, totally rectumfied. Uh, here on the MJ Morning Show in Q105. Yeah, it was some kind of corporate deal. I don't know what the story was, but they fixed it. All right, this is bizarre. A weird sex story involving an American woman, but in a foreign country. An American woman is no longer with us. An American woman dies in España. Froggy, that would be Spain. Oh. Yeah. From what they call extreme sex. What is this, Roxanne? Any thoughts on extreme sex? Is it when you do extreme activities, like you bungee jump at the same time as you <laughs> yeah. have yeah, sex, or you yeah. like I, simultaneously coinciding with uh, you know extreme activities, extreme it, sports? It, That's it, what I think. It of. wouldn't be tough as much as it would be just really good aim. American yeah. woman dies in Spain from extreme sex with her husband, and Spanish police are like heavily investigating what the heck's going on here. This woman was found dead over the weekend. Authorities believe her death was because of an extreme sexual encounter that obviously did not end well. 44-year-old woman, name not yet revealed, was found in an apartment in Malaga. That's on the Costa del Sol, right? That's like near Marbella, oh, Malaga, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, let, me, let me pull my map of Spain. Porto Benus, beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah. That's, what, that's what she was thinking during all that extreme sex. A weird story. The victim's 50-year-old husband, also Americans. He got two Americans, I guess, went on vacation in the southern part of Spain. He was arrested in connection with the death. Police believe that it occurred accidentally during an intimate encounter. What the heck is going on here? Mm. Was this like a Michael Hutchins deal or, you know, what? I mean, what, was it David Carradine as well? I have to look up all the guys who yeah, yeah, yeah. deprived themselves but, of but, air. But this was, a, yeah. this was a, a woman, just weird. The husband has been arrested but police think that it was accidental and it was all within the intimacy context. So in that case, if it's an accident, you've got a husband and wife, you've got willing participants here, and it's an extreme sexual encounter. I mean, I'm just trying to think what could this have been? The case was initially investigated as a violent act, but uh, it was then upgraded to homicide because of evidence indicating extreme risky sexual behavior. Again, 44-year-old wife, 50-year-old husband on vacation in Malaga in Spain. The woman's husband appeared earlier this week in local Spanish investigative court. And the judge ordered him held without bail. But that's all we have. That's extreme sex, and the wife is is dead. The the, the whole risky the the description descriptive words are throwing me off. I I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what happened. No, it's mysterious. It kind of intrigued me. And they're saying accidental, but the husband has been held. He's in, in jail right now. and if They're not giving him bond or bail. and It's a little bit more than accidental, maybe. No, no, they're saying, dude, they're saying. But the saying, judge is holding it with no yes, bond? Yes, but they're saying they believe it was accidental, some type of an extreme sexual encounter. Husband and wife, they think it's accidental, but he's been jailed and he's being held without bail. But they're mm -hmm. saying it was an accident. 
So I just I'm going to follow this man because this this has me all intrigued up good. Hey, speaking of sex, I happen to have in my possession the latest list of the most promiscuous countries in the world. Countries where, well, promiscuity is obviously uh, reigning supreme. Where do we stand? Where does where does the United States of America stand? How do those Americans change Spain's ranking? And this comes down to the average number of sexual partners from country to country. You know, obviously, culture plays a part here. Uh, we have. Uh, these stats from the World Population Review and the overwhelming uh, criteria here is going to. Can I ask what you guys are communicating about over here? I've got. You showed me a picture. Yeah, it's, 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 we're communicating about something different. You, you guys are like doing your own thing over here. You're all Let distracting me. me. I'm you, good you over do, here. You do your own thing. Let like, me see. Uh, how about we all just like focus on the show? What are, no. you, what are you showing? I found something on social media. Right, that, and, but in the middle of and you're showing Froggy. Now you're showing Roxanne. Well, you're can, the only one talking in a microphone sh- in the studio that nobody sees. It threw me off. Sh- I got to be off. Share it. <laughs> share, it me. With, share it with all of us. Why, why are you not focusing on what we're doing? Why are you doing something else? I'm trying because to focus, but I'm getting distracted. That's really? what, look, you're, Froggy's saying you're distracting him. Froggy's the one trying to focus around him. Yes, I can. I have a cloudy brain as it I, is. I got to be honest. I'm impressed that Froggy doesn't have his whole array of, uh, no. of, of work activity with his uh, other job laid out in front of him. All right. So I'm all sorry. Right. I'm, not, yeah. I'm, I'm distracting you while you what, tell me what, how many sexual partners what, people in what, Guatemala what, have. What, what, are you, <laughs> what are you doing? What Can you share this with everyone? One listening as well. It's, okay, it's not going to impress you. It, it really won't impress you. It's more like a huh than anything else. What is it? Why are you? I, I wanna, huh? Why are you derailing the show by doing something else in the middle of this segment? Because Facebook will tell you about things you posted years past. Oh, and that's what's important in the middle of us being on the air. There's an irony here, and what? I thought Froggy would get a huh uh, out of it. What's the, what's the irony? So. Back in 2017, oh, and pa- Facebook's like, hey, this is your memory from seven years ago. Yeah. I posted a picture of myself at a cigar lounge. Okay. And I tagged it with the word Puff Daddy. <gasps> oh, that didn't and, age well. Thank you. I was like, wow, so that didn't age well. Why do you have to do this in the middle of... <laughs> what, really? So you're you're distracting the whole crew in the middle of me doing content on the show. I distract everybody during the show. Just focus I, on what absolutely. we're talking about here. All right. Tell me about so, the sexual partners right, so, in, in, in Mozambique. All right, so, <laughs> Wait, can I make a yeah, guess? Come on. It's, it's all right. You can do what you do. It's not my fault you're a super squirrel guy. Uh, MJ, can I? <laughs> squirrel, <laughs> squirrel, squirrel, what? squirrel. Can I make a guess? I'm the most risque country or whatever. Was it promiscuous? What? Promiscuous? Yes, promiscuous. Promiscuous. I have the list of the most Hmm. promiscuous countries in the world, according to World Population Review, and the overwhelming criteria is the number of partners that somebody has had. Do you have any idea who is the number, it's like a Casey Kasem count, and okay. we're counting down the most promiscuous countries in the world. Hi, everybody. I'm Casey Kasem. Now, Casey, does this coincide with my map uh, of the wiener size, of the map of the world of the oh, wiener sizes? Oh, jeez. It might coincide with that because you would think, like, the Froggy, Greek. pull your map out. The Greek have the big ones, so they probably do uh, it all the time. Stop. Dude. I know I know a Greek guy, and no, he doesn't. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, okay. Wait, what, what are we degrading? Yeah. All right. So coming in at number 10, most promiscuous country in the world, Switzerland is number yeah. Yeah. number 10. And okay. again, the uh, main criteria is how many sexual partners people have had. And Switzerland, it's 11.1%. Sexual partners. Well, I think I already know the number one country. Right, well, you well, don't, I'll, don't, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guess it. By the way, why are you why are you hair twirling over oh there? Oh my god, is what this... is everything distracting you? <laughs> no, no. Oh my you? god, this is, no, this is you. I, no, uh, no, 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 no,
What do you think she's yeah. If you're a sex talk finger twirler, uh, that's what I'm asking. What? You're talking about making her horny? All right. Wait, what, what, am I what? Tra- what am I excited to go travel? And- All right. Here we go. Number oh. 10 is Switzerland. The average number of partners, 11.1. Number wow. 9 is Sweden. Then Italy is also at 11.8. Yeah. So Switzerland and Sweden seem to be tied. Then we have Norway with 12.1 on average. Finland, 12.4 average sexual partners. South Africa, 12.5. Iceland is next at 13 average yeah. sex partners. Mm-hmm. Doing the ice. New Zealand is number, uh, let's see, number three. Then number two is Australia. Australia. Average, Down under. Exactly. <laughs> Average number of sex partners in Australia, 13.3. Okay, number one. And Roxanne, you think you know what number one is? It's got to be the Netherlands. No. They are not in the they're not in the top ten. Like Amsterdam. That's where you go to um hire people. No, no, that's different though. (laughs) These are these are people having, you know, multiple partners like dates and relationships. I understand that. So 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 what I'm saying is part of the population there has has pretty high numbers based on that's what their job is. I don't know that they they ranked hookers. I I don't think that counts going to the red light district and and picking uh, some woman out of a, a window. I don't. Th- I don't yeah. think that. I don't well, think that counts. I mean, she's a person. No. She should get her numbers counted. Number one. I, I don't think that counts. If if you're if you're if you're, if you're a okay. if you're a sex worker. If you're taking the population of people who live in the Netherlands, that's that's, not, that, that was my rationale. But I guess it, that's not how they're doing it. Okay. Yeah, it really wants to give the sex workers their credit. <laughs> yeah. No. This is it. Bangkok. Yeah. No, it's not Bangkok. Well, first of all, that's not a, a country. Just uh, the area. Right. Uh, it's Turkey. The most promiscuous people on the planet, Turkey, the United States, we're not in the top 10. The Netherlands, not in the top 10. Weird. So there you have it. All right, 715 at the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. We start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. We also have to find out why Roxanne brought in a whole buffet of items. Uh, Also, we're going to have a taste test coming up. If you missed... The disgusting thing that a woman did and ruined dinner. This uh, mother prepares this wonderful meal for the family, but added an ingredient that totally destroyed dinner. That's coming up. Also, what the hell happened at Armature Works yesterday? You know, they, everything shut down. There was a, a shooting at Armature Works yesterday. This is just crazy. All right, Lee Burkhoff. The chief of police, city of Tampa, will also join us next to explain what's going on here. That's like a safe spot. It's a family spot. It's just weird. All right, so we'll get a full update on that and how the investigation is going. And that's next on the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Veteran.
It's not one of the lyrics in the song. Alright, uh, and whatever happened to uh, Spin Doctors? Are they? Uh, I think they're like touring like state fairs and stuff. I, I don't know what the hell happened to them. Seven twenty. I like that. So I always liked uh, those uh, two princes. What's the other song they did? It was two princes, and there was another. Uh, Little Miss, Little Miss Can't Be Wrong, wasn't yeah, that? Little other? Miss Can't Be Wrong. Yeah, that was a good song. All right, 727 at the MJ Morning Show here on Q105. Man, we have a lot coming up as we start an hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. Right now, hour and 20 minutes of nonstop MJ. And I have a follow-up that we'll get to in just a little bit. This is insane. We did something on this show yesterday, which was absolute, complete satire. And I get a whole angry email a guy telling me that I have my information wrong, that I don't know what I'm talking about. He's sending me screenshots and examples. It's like, MJ, get your act together. What is wrong with you? You're disseminating false information. I'm like, it was satire. And didn't most people get that I was joking? What? what I know what it's about. I know what it's about. Welp, apparently not. <laughs> All right, happened? don't don't blurt it out yet. Don't don't blurt. Well, it. I thought there was a bigger issue with that. Oh really? Yeah. Well, do you even know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I know. I I think I do. I think uh, I r- do. Write it quickly. Jot okay. it down. Jot it down. We got to call up uh, the chief of police, city of Tampa, Lee Burkhall. Give us a jot in just a matter of moments here to find out what the hell happened at Armature Works yesterday. Insanity, like a shootout. Innocent people hit. What's the latest? Who shot? Who? What's going on? What's the latest on the investigation? Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Roxanne just wrote it down. That's exactly. Yeah. yeah. We spent some time, which I thought it was clearly yes in yes. jest. Yes, and 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 that leads me to the right. issue that in any yeah. in any universe with the little segment that we did yesterday, where we were obviously joking. By listing a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of celebrities, famous people, in any way did anyone in this room think that that was a serious uh, story and a serious situation or just sheer absolute parody, satire, and comedy? Rocks? Uh, I com- thought it was complete satire and comedy. Thank you. So much so yes. that I thought there were maybe some plagiarism issues involved, i.e. stolen from the desk of Hal Herman. <laughs> yeah. It was very Hal Hermanish. Yeah, it really was. You know what? You know, now that you say that, you're a hundred percent right because what I did yesterday clearly Oh my god, you ripped off Hal. It, yeah, exactly. It, it could have been a total it could have been a total absolute Hal Herman uh, shtick bit. One hundred percent. It was almost like Hal Herman erroneous, fake, phony, mm-hmm. ridiculous BS headlines. Damn. What a ripoff artist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll explain what set a listener off in just a matter of minutes. Right after we talk to the chief of police, Lee Burkhaw, city of Tampa. All right, hang on. Let me... Uh, all right, let me get uh, Lee Burke on the phone. He is expectomerating our call here. Uh, 813-2. Uh, uh, all right, calling the chief of police to try to figure out what happened at Armature Works yesterday. Good morning. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the chief of police, city of Tampa, Chief Lee Burkaw. Chief, welcome back to the MJ Morning Show. Thanks for having me. We appreciate it. My goal is to get all the information out to the community so they can be rest assured that this place is a safe place. All right. So what happened? We had, what, at least three people shot? What, what kind of take us to the beginning, what time this was, where, where the investigation is now, uh, who are we looking for? What's the story? Sure, absolutely. So I think what everybody kind of got really overworked up is initially people thought this was an active shooter, and this was not. And my communications team was really quick to put that out on X. And, of course, you could see why people would think that if there's a shooting going on. But quickly we were able to dispel that this was not an active shooter situation. 
nor was this a targeted attack. This was two groups that were there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon that started to fight amongst themselves that quickly turned into a gunfight. And this is not tolerable. And I'll tell you, my detectives were up all night in my officers, and they are working some very promising leads. And I would anticipate that we would be announcing an arrest in this case very soon. Uh, sounds like you guys are very close. So do you think, uh, I don't want to press and pry, but do you think later this morning or by the end of the day we're going to have some arrests in this case? It, it all depends on the timing, but I'll tell you, we have some suspects identified, and these detectives are doing great work. But I can tell you right now, we're meeting with business owners down there and the community down there, and nobody wants anything like this to happen anywhere in the nation. Listen, Armature Works, Chief, is a delightful area. You have, you know, all of the, the you know, I was recently inside the event room, uh, you know, Sheriff Chad Cronister yeah. uh, had his campaign uh, re-election kickoff event inside that uh, events room at Armature Works. What a, uh, yeah, what a, many events there myself. Yeah, I mean, what, a, what yeah, a, I mean, what an amazing special space. I, I'm sorry, Chief, go ahead. I'm, I'm, on my days off, I'm down there occasionally too, and you probably don't even know that I'm down there. Yes. All right, so, Chief, did the restaurants have to close? Did they lose their entire uh, nighttime business last night? I think that's a choice that they made. You'd have to ask them. But right. I think everybody was just on pins and needles because they initially thought that this was an active shooter or some type of targeted attack. And that we quickly reassured them. And we're out there meeting with the business owners this morning. And, they, you know, there is no reason for anybody to be concerned. This is something that Here's what my ask to the community is, is gun, responsible gun ownership. Last year, we had over 200 guns that were stolen from cars that were left unlocked. Oh, this is a big, big pet peeve of mine, Chief. Make sure that these guns aren't getting into the wrong hands, and we have to be responsible gun owners. Hey, listen, in your jurisdiction, you know, I'm a South Tampa Beach Park resident, as you know, and we've had a couple of guns that... People left in their cars, in their driveways that were stolen in Beach Park that I know of, and that infuriates me. First of all, don't leave guns in your car. That's number one. And don't leave your car unlocked. I mean, we're having these crimes of opportunity where these crooks are going through neighborhoods at 1, 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. It's happened in my neighborhood, on my street, in Beach Park in South Tampa, where these criminals, they're not smashing windows with uh, you know punch tools. They're not taking a brick and throwing it through the window. They are literally just going up and down streets at 3 o'clock in the morning, walking up driveways and just testing door handles. And if the car is locked, they're leaving the car alone. If the car door is open, they're going in and stealing whatever they can. Well, that's that's my first ask. My second ask is if you're in a disturbance, we don't need to take a disturbance and turn it into a gunfight. And that's exactly what happened yesterday afternoon. A disturbance over some minor issues. I was going to ask you, do we know what the element of the argument was? We're looking at two possibilities, which is working our case and developing additional suspects. Do you expect that once you once you have arrest, do you expect that we're going to find out what the argument was about that led to a gunfight? It's going to be very minor. Oh, geez. It's and that's that's just it. Is people are turning to guns unnecessarily too quick, and that's what happened in this case. Let's talk about uh, at least three people were shot. Let's talk about those that were shot. Wasn't a mother there with a baby? We had three innocent bystanders that were shot, and that's that's the whole tragedy. But thankfully, they're going to be okay, Yeah, and their injuries are not life-threatening. And then, Chief, there, apparently there was a fourth. Did the fourth leave the scene? Apparently, the fourth took themselves to the hospital, so the injuries were very minor for them to take themselves to the hospital. All right, listen, Armature Works is such a great area. You have, 
You've got uh, Kosin, that new omakase uh, sushi place, which I haven't been to yet, which I, I got to try. You've got Roka, which is a Michelin-starred restaurant. Roka is fantastic, right across from Armature Works. You know, it's just such a great developed area. So many people around the Tampa Bay area love Armature Works, and it's a safe family spot. And we got a, a couple of knuckleheads here arguing over something stupid, and that we can't tolerate that. And I, I'm so happy well, to hear and that. We don't. And, and I'll tell you, in, in Florida, and specifically Tampa, we don't tolerate it. We're very quick to make arrests, and we have a tough state attorney who will prosecute to the fullest extent of the law. So you're not going to get away with it here. And you can look across the nation. It's not the venue. This is a gun problem. It's not a venue. This isn't a mall or another area. You look. All these locations, it's happening anywhere. So it's not the location. This is a gun thing. We need responsible gun owners, and we need people not to bring guns and settle disputes with mm. firearms. Um, but do you suspect that, uh, and I don't know if you have this information yet, are you potentially looking at the fact that the parties involved in this uh, gunfight, that maybe one or more individuals should not have even been in possession of a gun because of priors? Clearly that is part of our investigation. If that works into this case, then they will be charged appropriately and face those consequences. Gotcha. Uh, Chief, thanks for coming on. And let me, uh, I, I spoke about this yesterday. It came up on the show. Uh, I, uh, for one, think that you've done a wonderful job uh, as chief of police. You've been with TPD for, what, 30 years now? 30 plus? Just about 30 years. Uh, I, as a city of Tampa resident, I, I fully stand behind, and whatever we can do, I fully stand behind uh, you being able to get your pension and then uh, retire and then get rehired as a contractor to remain the chief of police. I, I'm fully behind that. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we'll be out there this morning at uh, Armature Works if anybody wants to stop by. Thank you, Chief. Great to have you on. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, chief Lee Burkaw, City of Tampa. You know, we had some disarray down there. Remember the Mary, the prior chief, and that. And uh, Lee Burkaw has done a wonderful job. And every single officer that I know, TPD, yeah. I know a lot of officers with TPD, uh, all love Burkaw. I uh, primarily yeah. know yeah. the officers that have pulled me over. <laughs> and uh, they all love Burkaw. And they, 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 love they, they all love Burkaw. They all love, love Burkaw. <laughs> you, you drop his name, and, and yeah. but they Listen. don't do anything for you. Yeah. All right. Now. <laughs> Let's let's dramatically shift gears here too. Do we have to put up flashing lights and sirens? Uh, maybe I could buy borrow some flashing lights and sirens from uh, Chief Burkhall. Yeah. Do, do we need to go satire, satire, warning, warning? Don't don't take this seriously. Warning, warning. All right. So Roxanne, you think you know? Well, I know, you, I know. You do because you held up a note saying yeah. that you did. All right. What did we do on the show yesterday? that elicited an email from a listener that was calling me out saying you're giving out erroneous information. I researched this. I couldn't find anything. <laughs> of What do you think I'm about to discuss? I feel so bad that that person went and researched that and, and to, to disprove you because everybody, most people listening knew that that was just satire. Listen, Your list? Uh, okay, go ahead, read it. They sent, no, I'm not going to read it yet. Okay. They Because you're talking about the, you know, the research. They sent me one, I'm holding up them, one, two, Three, four, five screenshots of research that they did trying to disprove what I said. <laughs> All right. It was a joke. Yesterday, post-eclipse from Monday, I was joking about the fact that we've heard a million times, do not look at the eclipse with your bare eyes, you must have eye protection. And listen, we were not in totality here. You couldn't even tell if you did not have the glasses and you looked at the sun. So if you didn't have, if you didn't look at the sun with the glasses and you were here in Tampa Bay, you would have no idea there was any kind of a you know this astronomical activity going on where the moon was uh, pulling in front of the sun because you could not tell. It looked like a regular sunny day. At maximum, we had 65.6% of the sun covered by the moon, but you couldn't tell. It didn't dim. It didn't get lighter here. Nothing. But if you had the glasses and you looked at it, it was amazing. It was really cool seeing how much of the sun was blocked by the moon. 
And, I, you know, I posted a bunch of pictures that I took with my camera phone with uh, eyeglass filters in front of my camera lens. And I posted those on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio, if you didn't get a chance to see them. But we were joking around based on the fact that all of the, the news channels and all of the reports online, experts say, don't look at the eclipse, you know, how to know if you have eye damage from looking at the eclipse, blah, 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 blah. All right. I think it goes without saying. You know, on, on a regular day, you can't stare at the sun. No. You know, but if you're in an eclipse situation and you have totality, you only had like four minutes to look at the eclipse without eye protection, and then you have to put your eye protection on when the moon moves away from the sun. So we were joking around about all of the famous individuals that went blind because they looked at the eclipse without the special glasses. And I went down a list and I said that Helen Keller, yep. she lost her eyesight because she did not follow instructions and looked right at the eclipse. I think it also made her deaf. Yeah, she lost her hearing <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. Very serious. I, Very serious. Then, then, I mentioned, <laughs> then I mentioned Jose Feliciano. Yes. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. All right. So uh, then I, I listed uh, Andrea Bocelli. Mm. The, oh, one of my favorites. The famous Italian tenor uh, blind. And, of course, yeah, he looked at an eclipse from Pompeii yeah. back in 1974 blind. Mm. That's, that's mm. what. Mm. And then, of course, Ray Charles. He looked at an eclipse when he was four years old. All right, folks, this was a joke. And it was delivered as a yeah. joke. All right, who took it seriously that I'm going down this list? Helen Keller, Jose Feliciano, uh, Andrea Bocelli, Ray Charles, Ronnie Millsap. Uh, then I started adding some other ridiculous names. Uh, Johnny Depp, who's not blind, but I said he was because he looked at an eclipse. Then I added Nancy Pelosi. And then uh, Froggy's favorite, Rachel Dratch, mm. formerly of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> oh, and then I mentioned what Stevie Wonder, and then we had we had then we had Doctor Chuck on the phone, my uh, ophthalmic surgeon friend, and we had asked Doctor Chuck, have in your decades and dec decades of ophthalmological surgery, have you ever had any kind of a blindness issue or? eye damage because of people looking at an eclipse, and he said never. But then, <laughs> then Chuck, Dr. Chuck Slonim, my good buddy, he drops the best line and says, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> he lost one eye because he had one eye open and one eye closed. See, when, <laughs> when, See that's comedy. When, when he was All right, folks, it was clearly a joke, but, but... I get an email from Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like, let, let me clarify, MJ. It's not like yesterday you said all that and today's the big reveal that it wasn't a joke. No, it was a joke while you were telling it. It w well, uh, wasn't you know, barely a joke. But uh, Listen, I thought the way it was delivered, it was clear satire. All right? So Matthew sends me an email. <laughs> MJ. I don't know where you got your information that Helen Keller and Ray Charles lost their eyesight due to looking at an eclipse. <laughs> I did a few Google searches and took screenshots of the results. Oh. Look at each of these screenshots and find out what Google says about their vision loss. <laughs> I, in a million years, I didn't think that anybody would take it seriously that I was being satirical and all jokey jokey about some blind people and the fact that they looked at eclipses previously I mean, this guy did totally a all right the way that i delivered that and we dealt with this on the air yesterday would you think that anyone would walk away with that takeaway roxanne i i would not but i do know that some people are like hey we're used to getting our real fake news from hal herman yeah, I mean, I think that speaks to how much faith he puts into you. Yes, exactly. And how much he cares about you. And if Hal would have said it, nobody would have questioned it as For real. Jokey, jokey. So Matt sends me, I've got five screenshots 
of research where he's like, uh, how did Helen Keller lose her? <laughs> how, how did Helen Keller lose her sight? How did Ray Charles? <laughs> and he's there's nothing about an eclipse here. They didn't. They didn't. Uh, they they yeah. didn't uh, misinterpret or or ignore instructions for safety. Did this, he provide you with some some Johnny Depp is not is not blind research as well? Yeah, uh, he's he, he's fully sighted. I, I tell you, what, let let me share all the screenshots here. You ready? All right. So the first screenshot is uh, Helen Keller, and he types in to Google, "Did Helen Keller lose her eyesight? <laughs> her oh, eyesight dude. from looking at an eclipse?" So, Matthew sending me this. Uh, Keller lost her vision and hearing after an illness when she was a toddler. So she had been exposed to language for about two years. All right. So nothing about an eclipse in the Helen Keller. All right. The next uh, screenshot that Matthew sent me. Uh, why did Helen Keller go blind? Again, it just goes into uh, what caused it. Uh, the next one here. Did Ray Charles go blind from looking at an eclipse? <laughs> I mean, he's doing the research. You have to at least acknowledge uh, that he's putting in the effort before uh, he calls you out. Ray yeah. Charles did not lose his sight until he was about seven years old. Years later, doctors suggested that juvenile glaucoma had caused his blindness, but Charles always maintained that his visual impairment never hindered his career in any way. Mm, uh, so I, I, I got Matthew here who's calling me out. Except for the heroin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on, but what else is uh, on here? Uh, yeah, okay, so Ray Charles. Okay, so he only searched for Ray Charles and Helen Keller. <laughs> Good enough. Hey, listen, thank you for the research. We oh. appreciate that part. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I just thought it was so obvious. Uh, oh, Roxanne's all ticked off that you missed the National AMSR oh. Day yesterday. Oh, it was so sad when I got home and I, I realized that it had been national, International ASMR Day. How did you drop the ball on that? It was, it's a special, special day for me. because Now, Roxanne is uh, weirdly turned on by certain <laughs> sounds. No, it's not uh, a so, turn on. It's a relaxing thing. It's a body. relaxation I, I, thing. It's, I, explain, explain. Come on. Okay, ASMR, I always forget what it stands for, but it's like auditory, sensory, meridian, response meridian, something like that. And basically, when you listen to these certain voices... And you, the way that they talk, it's it's usually women. I, I mean, they have men and women who do it, but I prefer to listen to the women. But it's not just voices; it's some, it's some sounds, right? I, li- I like voices. I have to have voices involved in mine and and sounds. But yes, like, you're correct. Some people like the sounds of like keyboard clicking, sure. or I mean, you name it. I mean, you know, you got eight billion people on the planet; yeah. just different things float different boats, but. A, was it A M S R? No, I'm sorry. It's A S M R. A S M R. A S M R. A feeling of well being combined with this is very. This happens every time. A tingling sensation in the scalp and down the back. So wow. it is a physical high. Wow. I will admit that, as experienced by some people, it's not. Not everybody experiences it. Only about thirty percent of the population or less experiences it, and the rest of the population thinks it's totally weird and i get that i think it's weird i i and listen yeah and uh auditory uh you know issues that's my career that's you yeah know, a- auditory involvement sound radio it's his life yeah, this, this yes froggy it is my life it's my life's work <laughs> it's called a- autonomous sensory meridian response and oh. you know what's strange you know what i found out because this is always confusing yeah. to me because certain people's mouth sounds when they chew really, really irritates me. Like, I get bothered by certain sounds. So that, so I think it's just a heightened reaction to noises in general. Because there is a correlation between people who are annoyed by mouth noises and people who respond well to ASMR. Like, my wife, mm-hmm. Michelle, she chastises me for if I chew too loud. You know, her line is... No one wants to hear what's happening inside your <laughs> mouth. I, that's yeah, like you eat like an animal. No, I yeah, that's don't. That's a good point. Yeah, you, no, you, I you do. Pretty, but you're pretty hard to be around. When yet you eat. we don't do a lot of recognition of national this or that day or international. But Roxanne sent me uh. a note saying, "I can't believe I missed it." Uh, ASM. So what is it? What uh-huh. a, what auditory stimulus 
gets you all uh, yes relax yes relax so and and it, let me tell you it's voices is there any particular voice okay i'm glad you asked because there are so many different styles of ASMR. I was first introduced to it, this this Russian woman who would just do a lot of, like, she'd pretend to put makeup on you. And I loved her accent, and I loved her voice. And she was like a true, she was one of the originators, like a true whisper voice. But now the two girls who I'm into, J.D. Lady, and she's what you call fast and aggressive. J.D. So she's Lady? Like, click, 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 just, okay, I'm going to do that. And like oh. she, it's it's like fast. They call it fast and aggressive Hold on, it's ASMR. It's like a YouTube video. Oh or? yeah, yeah. And yeah, she's like channel. talking all. She's talking yes. all fast. Yes. And so then, then I have another girl. Now the other thing I've just gotten into lately is clicky whispers, and this is Mellow Maddie, and she does really clicky <laughs> whispers. What? And this? Can you play some? Cl- cl- yeah, let me find some. What, what do you say? Clicky wiki. Clicky whispers. Oh, clicky whispers. Yeah, I, I, I just. I just love this girl. I mean, can we find that on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I, on I'm you- going to send it to I'm going to send it to Andrew right now, but I can no, try to no, no, send, send it, it to me. We have a computer send right it here. Send it to Fester. Okay. Fester can play it so, right here on so YouTube. Do, I'm on you YouTube right now. What do I search for? Just search for Mellow Maddie. Mellow Mellow Maddie ASMR. M A D D I E. M A D D Y ASMR. And listen again. Judge away because if you're in the seventy percent who don't get it, you're not going to get it. But my body reacts to it in such a way that I I love it. I will tell you one really weird caveat about ASMR. I I can't get the tingles if anyone is in the room with me, so I won't have that reaction. So you have to be alone to get yes. all tingly. Yes, yes. Like yesterday, I was like, I I Doug, I have to listen to ASMR. It's International ASMR Day. Uh, you know what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like sitting next to me, and I'm like, it's not working. So you had, another a, room? you had to sequester yourself? <laughs> sequester Doug. To, to get all tingly? All right, I'll tell you what, while we're trying to bring up uh, Maniac Maddie here, what what is it? That... Uh, I think I pulled up her page. All right. <laughs> while Fester is bringing up her YouTube uh-huh. channel, just for the heck of it, let's go to phones on this. Are you into the whole ASMR deal? This, uh, what is the, what is it? Auditory, auditory. Hold on, sensory hold on. meridian uh, autonomous, response. Autonomous, autonomous sensory meridian response. So I think you know. I don't know what that means. Quite honestly, all I know is when I listen to this stuff by myself, okay. it makes me very tingly. What sounds? What voices? What sound effects? Whatever. What gets your motor going, or what do you love? That is this ASMR related. I was looking at a story here. ASMR explained why millions of people are watching YouTube videos of someone whispering. Oh, we're a big, we're a big group. Let me, we're a big community. If you are into ASMR, (laughs) what sound does it for you, or what sounds do it for you? Okay. Eight hundred nine nine zero one zero four seven. That's how you get in. We would love to hear from you now. We'll grab a couple of phone calls on this. 800-990-1047. 800-990-1047. Also, it is 755. We got the cash kitty coming up in about five minutes at 8 o'clock-ish. We'll give you the next keyword to text or enter for your chance at 1000 bucks. That's happening in a minute. So if you are into the whole ASMR deal, I want to know what sounds do you love? What voices do you love? What does it do to you? Do you tingle? Do you, I mean, does it put you in this euphoric state? That, you know, what, what's the deal with you and ASMR? It does nothing for me, and audio and sound is my life. I love sounds. I love sound effects. Uh, everything audio I love, but I don't think I have this ASMR effect. So what does it for you? 800-990-1047. As Andrew is screening calls, Fester, what did you find? I think I'm on uh, Mellow Maddie's Asmer page. <laughs> All right, now we're going to rewind this to the beginning here. No, and, I don't and, think it has a beginning. It's just her it, making sounds. Just, yeah. I wonder who invented this. Who's the first person? Uh, that's a great question. To realize that this. All right, here that, we go. Well, let me let me play some of this. Ew! I hate this already. Oh my! Why is it? Stop, take it off. I hate it. I, I, I hate it. It's a try it by yourself. You might like it. She eat peanut butter or something? So sh- Stop! <laughs> you listen to this? But I have to, it, it, it's she's annoying me right now, whisper. but if I'm by myself, I like it. So she's just she's, speaking. In, okay. She's Go speaking Swahili. Oh, wait, 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 hang on a minute. Listen to this. She's chewing on a... 
she's taking like a a, a makeup brush mm-hmm. that has like uh, swirls on it and rubbing it on her teeth to make this noise. And I have this one as well. Oh my god! I, okay, I, I wanna I wanna throw myself in front of a bus. If that's I'm your, nauseous. Fester, Google find JD Lady. I want you to hear her because that this is clicky whisper style, and I want you to hear fast and aggressive. I don't like clicky whisper. Okay, oh so my. but here here's the thing. That is soothing to you. It it totally relaxes me. I want to jump and off a building. You know what it's like, MJ. You know those things that you get like. I want to di- throw myself <laughs> out of this glass window on the <laughs> second floor of our studio. That's fine. You don't have that response. It's fine. But you know you know there's you know those. Things you buy at Disney World that you put on top of your scalp and you rub them up and down and they give you tingles. You know what I'm talking about? They, they, they sell them at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, was Disney yeah, I don't think you have to go to Disney World. That's that feeling that you get from doing that. That's what the noise does for me. Again, this is like cilantro. Okay, like uh, some some people were hitting me. Please stop. That's gross. Okay. You don't have to say it's gross. It's like the same as like if you like cilantro or you don't. It's genetic. Some people hate cilantro because their genes make them predisposed to saying that cilantro tastes like soap. But I like cilantro. Guys, you should look up this guy, Farty (laughs) Farty Frankie. He does muffled uh, blanket farts. Oh, we stop it. Welcome to the Farty Frankie page. I'm here to <laughs> asthma you. Uh, oh, oh. We stop it. All right, let's <laughs> lean in. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to take too much time here because we got a lot of stuff. Have you heard of Burping Barry? Oh, yeah, he's, he's fantastic. All right, Welcome let's. To- Let's go. Uh, I right, stop. Uh, stop it. All right, let's uh, let's go to phones. Uh, so. ASMR, are you one of these people like Roxanne where these weird clicks and sounds or and it might not even be clicks. It might be just, uh, you know, some type of a sound that just does it for you, whether it's a voice, whether it's a sound effect. What is your sound trigger that you love or maybe something you hate? 800-990-1047. We'll grab a couple of calls here. 800-990-1047. Oh, my God. We're going to break the internet when Burping Barry and (laughs) Farting Frankie has a dual joint (laughs) asthma page. Thanks for coming, Barry. (laughs) (laughs) So glad you... (laughs) (laughs) This is great. So glad you came up... I love you. All right, it's, all right, all right, let me go to phones. Okay, this is so weird, guys. I'm getting a lot of messages, and people are either like, yes, I love it. This is, on, this is you, who I listen to. Where are you getting messages? On, on my phone. Or or they're saying like, or they're saying like, you know. Uh, oh, <laughs> I swallowed a lot of air. Like, like, I swallowed so, a lot of air. <laughs> Barry, or they're so Sorry. hateful. It's like, don't hate me because right. it's like saying you hate someone because they like a particular kind I, of music. I, Relax. Phone, phones have lit up. 800-990-1047. Uh, 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 Burping stop. Barry, will you stop I, it? I swallowed a lot of air. It's taking uh, a long uh, time to come out. It's MJ. MJ is in Riverview. MJ, welcome to MJ. You're on. Hey, you guys. I've talked to you once before. Um, so I'm into it. Um, I'm not into necessarily the voices. Um, I follow this lady on, she's on Instagram and YouTube, and the one we won't talk about that you don't like, MJ. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's so nice. She does like fingernails on th- on yeah. different things, like you know, you know, like those rubber scrubbies. She'll do that, and then she'll also take things along, like a microphone, whether it be a brush or just anything she can find. And some of the sounds are like, okay, yeah, that doesn't do it for me, but others, yeah. it's just like, it's it's just it's such a calming effect. Yeah. All right, so MJ in Riverview. What is the number one sound that is like euphoria or makes you ecstatic? Okay, she gets these. Uh, what's that stuff that kids get that looks like snot? What is that stuff? Uh, called? Slime. Oh, like those slime. Uh, yeah. Okay, so she has this company she goes to, and she gets slime, and the slime. I guess it smells really good. Of course, I have no idea what it smells like, but then it has. Like either beads in it or things, and it kind of makes like a popping effect. Mm-hmm. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you make and a hole. Will, you yes, you make a hole in it, so then then oh. it pops. Yeah, yeah you and fall, then you... she'll she'll place it like over her microphone, mm-hmm. and it's not loud. It's just and it's just such a soothing. And you said that you have to be alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if other people in the room, it's just like, okay, this ain't doing it for me. Exactly. But if it's just something you're listening to, and it 
I'm, I'm a very busy person. I do a million and one things. Yeah, um, yeah. Seriously, I, my husband's in two bands, so we're Whoa. very busy. So yeah, it's it's just in the evening. I'll listen to it, and it's just. <laughs> Just slime bubble pops. Yeah, no, MJ, it's just, thank you very much for calling. It works. I, I appreciate thank it. Thank you, yeah. Right, let me give you the cash kitty. I wonder if anyone has like, uh, uh, is anyone all turned on by the cash kitty noises by any chance? Probably somebody. Yeah, just out of curiosity. Hang on, I got my I got my page of all the, the cash kitty noises. Uh, hang on, where are they? Where's the cash? Here, here's the cash kitty. So uh, let me give you some of the cash kitty noises here. Yeah, like. All right, so cash kitty time and your chance at a thousand bucks right now. Hey, if you had some issue with the texting, the technology has been fixed. Yeah, so there was some issue with some people that were texting. That problem has been rectified. This hour's word for the cash kitty is pot. As in, Froggy likes to smoke pot. Is that the pot calling the kettle black? (laughs) All right, so (laughs) this hour's word is pot, P-O-T. It's a boomer. Yeah, text it nationwide to 45911 before 815, before quarter after. You got a shot at 1000 bucks right now, or you can enter it on the Q105 app or at myq105.com for your shot at 1000 bucks in our nationwide texting contest. We'll do it again at 10 a.m., 12 noon, 3, and 5 p.m. All right, back to the phones now. I have a question. Have you guys seen the microphones that are shaped like ears and the girls like lick the ear microphone? Yeah, yeah. I, I've done those <laughs> before, awesome. but that's a little bit too much. For, it's a little too... I found popping cause... slime asthma. <laughs> All right, hold on to that. Just okay. go back and hold it. Hold Let it. me grab Layla in Brandon. Layla, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hi. Layla, are you there? I'm here. All right, Layla, tur- yeah, turn your, do me a favor. Turn your radio all the way down because we're on delay. It's going to confuse you, okay? Get us on our knees, Layla. Come on. All right. <laughs> Deal. Layla, go ahead. So my daughter got me into it, and um, then she made fun of me for it <laughs> because because uh, I didn't like the same style she liked. Right. Yeah, we have, we have different styles. Okay, and? I'm not. I, I don't like the mouth sound. That kind of creeps me out. Yeah. Um, but if it's like a spa, if if the if mm-hmm. the scenario is set like it's a spa and it's relaxing and you hear water running and it's like a meditation, so it helps you to you know calm your nerves at night and chill out and relax. So, Roxanne, is it similar to the people that have like the white noise machines um, or uh, you know listening to like the it's, the water dripping? Uh, it's like on steroids. It's that on steroids. Mm-hmm. It's it's really big. It's it, like right. you know who you would like is Josie B. Anybody right. who calls by the way and who's into ASMR, I can steer you in the direction of some great ASMR artists. And Josie B yeah. would be one you would like. She does some weirder stuff now, but if you go back in her older YouTube videos, she does a lot of spa stuff. Did you right. call them a whispering and latte? Those are two good ones. Oh, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Layla. Have a great day. Roxanne, you called them ASM artists? Yes, that's what they're called. ASM okay. artist? Yes. Okay. Man, you, you're like a total buy-in on uh, this. Oh, listen, I go on the- You're U- using I, terminology. I, w- I would never in my life comment on someone's YouTube page, but on all their YouTube pages, I comment. Okay. I'm like, you're my favorite person in the world. Yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a total weirdo when it comes to- these people. Hey, Andrew, I'll take Jill, Tasha, Lisa, Sherry, and Terry, and then shut it down because, man, the phones have exploded. All right, before I go back to phones, Fester, you found the Satisfying Slime YouTube page? I mean, it is. Oh, my God. He's just folding over slime and then squeezing the air out of it. In a bucket. Yeah. And what is this now? Just crunching and squeezing yeah. and popping slime and see that that doesn't that's not what, what I would go to, but a uh, lot of people love that. Kids like that stuff too. All uh, right, Jill. Jill's in Largo. Hey Jill, welcome to the MJ Morning Show. Hi guys, how are you? We are well. Did Hi. we uh, push your buttons this morning? Well, I always I always listen to Roxanne while I'm cleaning. 
Um, I've called you before. Hold on, you you listen to Roxanne? What, what do you just like tune fester myself and Froggy <laughs> out? How do you listen to one of us? No, I listen to her day show. Let me rephrase. Thank that. you. Oh, her midday oh, show. Her oh, midday thank show. You. Oh, okay. Roxanne after right. the MJ morning show. Okay, yes, the pride of the station. Yes, and when I'm cleaning and I'm, I'm frustrated and Roxanne's I- like the cockroach of Q105. <laughs> Uh, you know, but seriously, after nuclear war, like you, you'll, be, you'll be the only one standing. All right, go ahead, Jill. <laughs> what a compliment. You're such a dork, MJ. I swear to Go ahead. So, when I'm having a really hard time finishing what I got to do, Roxanne comes on and she starts talking, and all of a sudden everything just is like okay again. And oh my I, gosh. I just love Roxanne. I love Roxanne. She makes my day. I've texted her that. I've told her that she makes my day. And um, even though I didn't win the $1,000 when you had that, I'm hoping I win from the cash kitty. So uh, anyway, I love you guys, and I especially love Roxanne. Oh, oh wow. I appreciate that. Uh, but you do, that. you do love us, too, just lo- Roxanne more. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. If, if the morning show was like on a sinking ship and fair you could enough. save one of us, it would be Roxanne. Oh, yeah. We're doomed. Well, first of all, you're just. Thank you, Joe. Did, did she call in about the topic? Uh, yeah, because about... she was talking about my voice. Oh. Get yeah, she, it? She's oh. just crushing on Roxanne. No, 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 no. The point was is my yeah. voice relaxes her like yeah. ASMR. Roxanne. Because I try to put everybody in a good mood. Listen, yeah. your, your, street ever, your car ever goes down the other side of the street. You call Jill first. Like Kramer with the Mary Hart <laughs> voice on Seinfeld. Remember that? Oh, my episode? God. Look at this girl. What? What? She has 300,000 subscribers, queefing carries. <laughs> <laughs> queefing carries. Stop. All right, come on. Welcome to the, Stop it. Welcome to the QK show. Tasha <laughs> in Carrollwood. Tasha, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hi, Tasha. Hey, good morning, guys. Yes. Uh, okay, so my favorite thing is fingernails. So there's this one Ukrainian chick, and I don't know her name, but she does, uh, like, Mercedes and different car, like, tutorials where she's showing off the the like inside of the car and outside with her fingernails and tapping on the car. So she's clicking on like the steering wheel or the scratching oh, yeah. it to hell. The door. And, and she's sexy too, so it's it's uh it's very intriguing. Oh, she's sexy as well. I've seen her. Oh, yeah. yeah. She, the blonde girl. She, she touches every yeah. surface in the car, but with her nails, and it's like it gives that sound. I mean, there are a lot of sexy Ukrainian women. I mean, and, and she's Ukrainian, so Amen. when she says it, she's like. Mercedes, and she's clicking her her fingers. But there's a there's a woman that does a spoof of her for people that hate ASMR, and she has a nasty minivan, and she's clicking her she's clicking her nails around her. Got a beat the crap Dodge Caravan. <laughs> oh my God, it's hilarious. All right, Tasha, thank you for listening to the MJ Morning Tasha, Show. Good morning, guys. You too, Lisa in Saint Petersburg. Lisa, MJ Morning Show, you're up. My 15-year-old daughter, she is obsessed with this videos um, on YouTube of crunch, like people eating foods that are crunchy. Oh, like Doritos or something? Everything, toast, anything that's crunchy. And she'll come running out to me. She goes, Mom, listen. And she'll put it in my ear. I'm like, oh, my God, get that away from me. It's horrible. But, you know, I'm, you know, early 50s, so I'm not into that stuff like they are, but... Yeah, but and also to relax because she suffers from anxiety. <clears throat> you know, she has a heavy school load in high school, and she actually. Oh, I'll tell you what. Why don't you bring her down here one morning? We'll get the uh, the huge family party bag of like Lay's potato chips and have Fester just eat like seventeen bags in front of her. How yeah. about that? <laughs> So he could end up in the hospital again. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Yeah, Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. Lisa. L- Lisa talk, about, talk about relaxing. You know, I can get my pulse down to the low 40s when I listen to it. Well, what? I can only yes. listen to Wiener Wayne, and he just <laughs> hits his wiener on stuff. Wiener Wayne. Welcome yeah, to the right. Wiener Wayne yeah, show. Yeah, leave it to Froggy. <laughs> all right. S- stop it. All right. This is a Mercedes. <laughs> Look. The hood. All right. Stop it. All right. Sherry in Tampa, <laughs> you're is, on the MJ Morning this Show. Is the Hi. the tailpipe of the Mercedes. Uh, uh, Hi, guys. Hey. Um, Hi. So... This is a kind of strange. I've never heard of ASMR, but um, I'm sure this falls right in line with it. Anyone in the horse world or the barn world, um, after a long, hot day out fixing fences and, you know, do working horses and cleaning stalls or whatever, we always, um, you know, in the end of the day, you have to feed all the horses and you turn the lights off and you can hear nothing but the horses chewing their hay. 
It is the most relaxing sound ever. I could see that. Yeah. I like that. Wow. Thank you, Sherry. I love that after a long day of building fences, too, ma'am. And the last call will be Haley. Then we're going to move on here. Haley in Riverview. Hey, Haley. Hi. This segment is perfect for me. I love ASMR. And it's kind of weird because I watch a certain ASMR. It's called Beloved. And she eats seafood, like um, crab legs. And I don't even eat seafood. <laughs> Wait, so you love the sound of, of what is her name? Her name's Beloved Life. The Love Life? Beloved, yeah. Beloved. And it is so satisfying to watch her slurp out these crab legs. Oh. I don't eat ever. Does it's she suck fun. oysters out of shells? Yes, she does that too. Wow. She has all of the seafood. It's smackalicious. It's smackalicious? Oh, God. Yes. All right, how do you spell it? I got to look this up. How do you spell her name? It's B Love Life. B Love Life. Yes. And she just slurps out seafood. Yes, it is so satisfying, especially when she gets um, an all claw pull out. <laughs> Wait, an, all, mm. an all claw. We ought to get her down to Florida and have, st- have her do some colossal stone crabs. <laughs> She oh sucks my. it out like no other. All right, she put up a video. Did you just say she sucks it out like no other? Like no other. Wow. I watch a lot of ASMR, and she's the best. Haley, how old are you, just out of curiosity? I'm 24. Awesome. Haley, do you listen to us every day? Yes, my daughter Adeline loves you guys. She's eight years old, and she's the reason I listen to you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Haley. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a good morning. Bye-bye. I mean, all my babysitters love ASMR. That, that it's it's, a, a, it's a definitely like a younger thing. She was a young mother. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Well, thank you, uh, Haley and daughter. We appreciate you listening to the show. All right. I had no hey, idea. why don't we transition to another sensorial topic uh, where I want to go to eat. I love well, topics. Let's <laughs> let's do the body wash thing first. Let, let's... Let, let, no. What? No, we what, have what, to no. do hold no. On, hold on, Andrew. Andrew, hold on, Andrew. Oh, what, um, oh, Andrew You're says totally I'm totally s- screwing it, everything up. What am I screwing up? Just, just relax. Okay. Okay, I know what you're talking about, the loofah sponge. No, we're not going to do that right now. No, we need no, to do. The, I'm talking about the lady that wrecked the recipe. All right, I, hold Roxanne's on. in charge. Hold, like okay, right. okay, right. okay, hold, 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 okay. Let it out of right. no, no, What's no, happening? No, you're ruining everything. I okay. don't know what I'm, I'm ruining. I'm going to take over the show right now. Okay, all oh. right. So, anyways, tra- moving on, it's, moving on. It's... Let's get into something Roxanne sent me an email about the other day that she's really excited about. You are Roxanne, though. I know. I'm pretending to be MJ. I just took over. Okay, pick it up from here, MJ. What dining in the? Oh, the yes, oh, yeah. dining in the dark. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yes, da, 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 dining in the. So I remember hearing about dining in the dark a long time. I mean, maybe twenty years ago. I remember hearing about some restaurant. I thought it was in New York, where you go into a room, the lights go off, there is no light, and Literally, you eat in the dark. You're served in the yes. dark. You don't know what you're getting. Dining in the dark. So it's not new, but there's a new twist because, Roxanne, you saw a story that dining in the dark is coming to the Tampa Bay area? The, that's the twist. Hold that's on. That's the twist. Is, is it like, coming is, to Tampa. Is it a one-off event, or is it like going to be a restaurant that's going to have dining in the dark? Okay, it's happening at the Center Club off of West Shore. And it's the first one is April 26th, and it runs, runs through early June. I already bought my tickets. I'm really? so excited. Does Doug yes. know about this? No, no, I, I didn't. I told him I no. Are it's, you taking Doug? Yeah, yeah, but I'm not going to tell him t- where I'm taking it. And what date is this? And this is, I'm going in May, but but this is running from April 26th until mid June. Okay. So I've always. How much is it? It's a I touring like, restaurant? I, I That's think cool. It was, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's like. It's like a, like, think of it as dinner theater, like it's a. You know, pops up. So it's, so it's a special. It's a special. Like they've been in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta one time, and they had it there, and I wanted to go, but I didn't get a chance. Are they going to be and able they, to make the Center Club all dark? I'm sure they are. I'm sure that's what their experts. Or are they going to blind pe- blindfold people? I, I mean, I, I don't know what their methods are, but I will tell you, I've done a similar experience okay. in Atlanta, where I forget what it was called, but it was it was similar, and you go on a tour. 
with this guy, and you cross a busy intersection, and you're blindfolded. Oh, that's great. That sounds really safe. No, no, but it's inside. A, it's oh, inside. my God, bus! No. <laughs> Seriously, you hear the, you know, you hear the cross, the sound of the t- click, click, click to know it's safe to cross the street. You hear the, <laughs> yeah, they simulate yeah, all that for you. Until someone gets run no, over. They simulate grocery shopping. You right. go grocery shopping. You can't see a thing. All right, so where's this going? Then you go and you have dinner, and the guy's like, "Hey, guess what? This I'm blind. This is how I go through my life." All right. So where this, where is this segment going? Okay. Well, I wanted to do a little bit of dining in the dark with our with our fine friend with uh, Froggy and Fester here, and Your I wanted to blind <laughs> I wanted to blind, blindfold them. And MJ, and, I'm, I'm, no, no, I'm not going to blindfold you because he has to describe what's going on. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm, I'm suddenly divested into this segment. You know what? I can Fesh, count on you guys for nothing. Well, listen, I can on. count on you guys for nothing. Fesh, what's your tood? All right, so, yeah, yeah, suppository. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, want to blind, <laughs> you want to blindfold Fester and Froggy? Sure. Yes. Yes. Have them dine in the dark? Yeah, and, just do and, some samples. I brought like three courses in. And what's, what's the end game here? You want them to guess what they're this, dining on? Yeah, yeah just experience. Oh, okay, listen. If people are, are thinking to themselves, you know what? I want to try this dining in the dark thing that's coming to Tampa. Maybe I'll get tickets. Well, now okay. they've heard a little bit of what it might be like. The whole point of dining in the dark is it enhances your other senses. Okay. So so basically things taste better and you All have right. better conversation because you All can't right. see anything. All right. I wish I couldn't hear anything right now. You are <laughs> a right. So what are we doing? Just, what are we doing? Negative fester. What are we doing? All right, well, let's okay. go. We've got you got two minutes. So, so here's go. what I, talk amongst yourselves for a second. How you feel well, about it? I'm going to switch over here so I can help both these guys. All right, let's get let's so, get it going here. MJ, the idea is Roxanne wants to blindfold uh, Froggy and myself, and uh, she has prepared some food or purchased some food, and she wants us to to sample it. But right. I can see the food right there. Oh, I'm wearing the pink one. I'm wearing the pink one. All right, so are you guys blindfolded? So they're getting blindfolded right now. Um, I brought in uh, three ties. Oh, that's what the ties are for. Yeah, she asked you. She's like, do you guys have ties? I have three ties. Oh, my God, I feel like I'm totally blind. And I'm trying to fit. What's the payoff here? Just to help me out. Hey, why don't you just relax, all right? (laughs) You don't need a payoff. This is a Roxanne radio hour. All right. right. God, you are such a... You you guys, you know what? I had something even more elaborate planned. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. I had something even more elaborate. And guess what? What? I told Doug about it. And he goes, no, you can't do that because MJ won't won't allow you to succeed with with that. Yeah, that's right. So that's what you're, you're proving him right right now. Why are you doing that? Doug says, I, I won't allow you to succeed. Well, he didn't what, say what? succeed. The words he used was like, was like you can't control what's going to happen if you do that. Will you guys just relax and enjoy right. this experience? Just, all right. So, all right. what, what is the experience and how long before the experience begins? Where's it's my microphone? Starting right okay. now. Starting right. All right, let's go. Okay. All right. <laughs> what are we doing here? Well, all thanks right. for having me to dinner, guys. This is really nice. All right, what is the first uh, item here? Let's go. This is a really fun right. dinner. All right, Fester. Thank God I don't have to look microphone. at MJ. <laughs> All right. Where's your mic? Just, 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 <laughs> okay, this we're is gonna weird. start with dessert. We're going to start with dessert. Look, MJ, describe what you see here. Uh, I. Wait, do you want me to say what it is? No, just describe no, it. Just see, Rex, well, just pulling some dessert. Tie out. Smells, <laughs> is it, is it, I'm right, looking at. Uh, this tie smells like I'm, ass. I'm looking at something tubular. All right. So, I actually wear my ties what? on How my are you ass. Doing to All right. Me? So Roxanne is shoving. Oh. A tubular item into Froggy's <laughs> mouth. It's, it's, it is a rolled tubular, long cylindrical uh, item mm. that's being okay. shoved. Uh, is, is this how dining in the dark is? They that, feed you. Uh, describe what you're uh, tasting. Uh, describe how it is. Mm. What, what, what are you <laughs> tasting? What do you think that is? A very warm and what, what quite you, good. What do you think it is? Cannoli. It is. Oh, whoa! Look at that. It, See, it is. I'm job. Italian. Wow. Yep. Yep, so, uh, f- uh, Roxanne just shoved the cannoli yeah. into Froggy's face. Okay. Right, what's what's next with okay. Fester? Fester, Fester, yes. here you go. Here you go. Okay. Mm. Here you go. What is that? Uh, yeah, in the microphone, Roxanne. <laughs> what does that taste like, Fester? Oh, my God. <laughs> She's shoving a whole container. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 Fester's, oh, my God. Do you have this on camera? Well, it tastes like... What oh my happened? God, Fester's uh, sucking on Roxanne's <laughs> fingers. Uh, 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 like your Rox- hand, Rox- Roxanne's creamy <laughs> fingers. Fester is licking Roxanne's <laughs> creamy f- What is going on here? <laughs> it, tastes like, it tastes like your hand, Roxanne. Okay. Uh, Andrew, did okay, you listen. get that on video? 
That was uncalled <laughs> for, you, sir. Oh she, put her, she put her hand in my mouth and said, what are you tasting? Oh, my okay. God. You, you, you sucked on Roxanne's face. She put it in my face. You saw it, guys. Okay. God, no, that, I didn't see nothing. That is so right. disturbing. Oh, I didn't, that I didn't see it either. Disturbing. I'm right. not involved in oh that. Oh, my God. All right. All right. Now, what yeah. do you see here? We got some olive oil, right? All right. We do have this olive oil. a nice Italian dinner for the Italian boys yep. here. All right. So, you got a little bit of olive oil. So, All right. So, so now... Now we have olive oh, yeah, oil. Bread. Oh, thank you. All right, so you oh, did. You, what the hell are you ho- doing? Hold on, it uses. But you. <laughs> my face. I but, thought you were going to serve us a plate with but, this food. Okay, okay. But Roxanne, you did say olive oil, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you didn't want that to be a secret. Okay, here's the olive oil. Right, here's so, the olive oil. Right, here's for Fester. Right, nice, nice bit of olive oil Bertoli, here. Bertoli. There you go. Bertoli olive oil. You put it in my mouth. Yeah. Dipped in zits now, my chin. <laughs> dipped in a sourdough bread. It looks like. Okay, and then finally. Our, I, by the way. I love a good bread, w- dipping it in olive oil with maybe some garlic and some spices. That's that's very delightful. Why don't you have a bite of this? All right. Very good. Okay, okay. We need, what, what happened to my forks here? Oh, they're there. Okay. All right. Okay. Dining in the dark is delicious. Uh, how is the olive oil dip bread? Um, uh, You know, bread and oil. So, I just can't yeah. believe you sucked on Roxanne's fingers. That I was... Just, I just want to do two different olive oh, oils oh, you, here uh, because right. it's like a taste test. So you you boys can say which one oh, you like hey, the better. Hey, and, and by the way, olive oil tasting, that is a thing. Yeah, so get this on that, camera. That, 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 that is a thing. Olive oil tasting oh, yeah. where they line up all different. Uh, do you know there are olive oil stores? stores. How much olive There's, oil do they have to sell to sure, pay the rent? I know. There are olive oil stores where they have like 300 different types of olive oils. Okay. All right, all right, so Roxanne. So I am dousing this pasta, <sighs> fresh pasta. R- Roxanne has a whole bowl of uh, spaghetti. Do we have to still be blind? And she is pouring uh, olive oil oh. on the pasta. Yes. Yes. And <sighs> and also, okay. that is nice as well. You get just a pasta with olive oil yes. and maybe some shaved parm and some pepper. Oh, that's yeah. delicious. That's yeah. a delicious. delightful, yeah. simplistic okay. pasta dish. So now I'm doling it out onto right. separate place, plates sick. for these guys. I want you guys to I, eat it at the ugh. same time. So Roxanne okay. has put the olive oil on the pasta. <sighs> yep. And now you're going to feed this to... Uh, I actually like this olive oil. It's very good. All right. All right. So... Okay. Okay. Fester, just it's in front of you. Are right, you getting have Froggy and Fester eat yes. at the same time? Yeah. All right. Where's my walking stick? I want them to eat at the same time. All right. So go ahead. Try try the pasta and go. Try the pasta. Are we trying it? Yeah. Try the pasta. Eat the pasta. Go. Oh, no. What? Are you alright? Dude, Roxanne, you poisoned them. What are you? Oh, I'm not going to be well. Are you... uh, Roxanne. Are you okay? Oh, oh, nice. oh, Roxanne, that wasn't nice. <laughs> Froggy, take it's, your take your blinds off. It Froggy. smells like a shower in here. Oh, oh my what is god! That? Oh, that's that crap olive oil <laughs> spell <laughs> stuff from yesterday. Remember what we talked about G- yesterday. Give, give me the bottle. Give me the, G- give, me, give me the bottle. Oh, that was cruel. That Roxanne, that was mean. All right, here's what just I'm happened. Quite mean. Right, why? Why did Fester and Froggy uh. just start? Coughing and gagging. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold this up to MJ TV right now. Uh, Ro- Roxanne just poured the olive oil uh, shower gel over the pasta, and Froggy and Fester just ate pasta with shower gel. <laughs> now, uh, oh my, it smells all soapy. Like it smells like a. My it shower like a locker this room or something. Yeah, it does. No. Oh my god! Get yeah. away from me! This is awful. Yeah, it, god. it's it's real. It's overwhelming. Yeah. It no. is. Oh, all right. Here, here's what happened. Ugh. Let me tell you what happened. I don't feel good. Well, the smell's killing me. How about the taste? Uh, I I can't even imagine if I if I can't breathe from the smell. I can't imagine the taste. Finally, I don't have to uh, clean up something. Fester vacated the studio. F- F- Fro- uh, How much did he eat? Uh, Roxanne. <laughs> Oh. You 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 poisoned them effectively. You know that, that's I like, think that's a crime. It was an Seriously, accident. it was an accident. I, I, it was I, an I honest mistake, just like that woman I, made when I'm she made yak. that olive oil. Uh, yeah, Froggy's running out of the room. He's gonna yak. That, it's it. Froggy and Fester have run out of the studio now. You know, I thought about it. It's not that bad because what happened to us when we were kids? You get your mouth washed out I, with soap. You I, think those two haven't had their mouths washed Roxanne, out with soap before? Roxanne, 
Do you realize that food tampering is like a federal felony? Yes. Guilty. <laughs> uh, Fest, are you going to press charges? Gra- grab your microphone. Gra- no, not that one. That's, uh, that's, that's the uh, mic. Grab the other mic. All right. Oh, my God. That was terrible. All right, so uh, was that the olive, olive it, soap? It was. Okay. <laughs> so awful. here's the story. If you missed it yesterday, we had an item how this mother prepared this chicken oh. dish. And she needed olive oil for the chicken dish and made this beautiful dinner. Oh. The mother accidentally used Chorus, K-O-R-R-E-S, pure Greek olive shower gel. There's a shower soap, a shower gel that is made with olive oil. where It has big letters that says olive. There's an olive tree. There are olive leaves and little olives all over the label. It is not olive oil. It's not for human <clears throat> consumption. It is a shower gel for your body. Okay. And this mother used that in the chicken dish. And the whole thing tasted like soap oh. and shower. Oh. And then Roxanne just brought, and on yesterday's show, Roxanne said, I've got the same stuff that the mother accidentally used in the chicken dish. So Roxanne brought it in <laughs> and just had Froggy and Fester while blindfolded eat the pasta with the shower gel olive oil. Okay, so what did we do today? What did we accomplish? We debunked, remember? We committed a felony no, by no, no, food no, no, no. tampering. No, we <laughs> We know that that woman was just, that was just. Oh, my God. Paul, stop. Stop. Froggy, look up at the camera. Froggy, just look up at the camera. Oh, my. Look at Froggy. It's awful. It is awful. I don't feel good. Oh, my God. Did you get that on MJ TV? What? Hold on. Did you get Froggy on MJ? All right. Take Froggy's camera. Look up at the camera. Why? Oh, my God. God. What are you all my guy about? You look awful. I'm going to tell you right now, MJ. That yes. whole story, while yesterday, it's a lie. yesterday it seemed plausible, that's a made-up story. It's a totally made-up story. We just proved click, it. It's an internet clickbait article. There is no way this mother used this product and no. did not know. Because it smells like a shower. It, well, that's yeah. why on the show yesterday, what did I say? Yesterday on the show, yes. I said, I don't know if this story is real. Well, we found out. It's false. Because it immediately smells like you're lathered and- up <clears throat> in the shower. There's no way that anyone has ever cooked with olive oil. And then pours that in. It it smells like a, a freaking bubble bath immediately. It, it does. And not only that, MJ, I was the guys couldn't see, but I was showing you as I was glopping it out of the bottle. It doesn't even have a, a olive oil consistency to it. Oh yeah, my god, that was insane. My tongue is tickling. How are you guys feeling? We'll be yeah. hearing from my lawyer. <laughs> Well, that's you will be hearing from my HR lawyer. Please, my lawyer. sucking my fingers. Oh, let's uh, let's let's, right. let's take that to the corner, right, folks. Uh, <laughs> you do not want to watch MJ TV today. Whatever you do, you do uh, not you do not want to see Fester sucking on Roxanne's cream she, filled she fingers. Put her fingers in my mouth. No, it was I... a blindfolded uh, test. God, <laughs> you thought my fingers were literally what, clairs. What is your little hu- mini eclairs. What is your husband Dig Dug? Uh-huh. What is he going to think about Fester sucking on your Fingers that were doused in tiramisu well, he told, cream. He told he doesn't know about the the dining in the dark experience because that's going to be a surprise. Well, so I told him not to listen right now. So surprise, he's not Doug gonna loves Fester. He can do no wrong. <laughs> surprise, Doug. Oh, you tell someone not to listen. They're going to listen. What are you kidding me? <laughs> Don't listen, Doug, because I'm going to take you to dining in the dark. <laughs> Doug, this sounds like a terrible night. <laughs> yeah. Hey, let's have a dinner experience where I fake a handicap. Please, this sounds awful. Have you guys heard of? Uh... Nubs and dinner? Yeah. What is nubs and dinner? Yeah. Is it, is it the same as the amputee experience? Yeah. You have to yeah. tuck in your arms like this. Yeah. You have to, they, they just tie you to your torso. Uh, and they're like, go for it. There's a steak. And you're like, Jesus, what the hell is that? And you, you <laughs> cook it with your elbows. Uh, all right. Uh, next <laughs> on the MJ Morning Show, let's try to compose ourselves. Have you heard about <laughs> deaf dinner? Roxanne, I really don't feel good. What, why? Well, you notice you, I never do anything to you. Have you, you ever noticed? You ate shower gel. <laughs> She poisoned you. What if I get really right. sick? Next. You know how this uh, new tipping culture is driving me nuts. Uh, the the forced tipping, the, the guilt tipping, this is just, it's aggravating to me. I do not get bullied into tipping in places where we've never tipped in the past. You know, a fast food restaurant or an establishment where we never tipped until, like, 
last Wednesday, and then suddenly, <laughs> would you like to tip 18, 20, 25, 30%? I'm not getting bully tipped. Are you ready for the latest tipping story? Sure. Sure. I've sure. got I've got two items, two tipping items. The first one is up in New York City. There is a new restaurant chain. They are using customer service people on a video screen in the Philippines. <clears throat> and they're asking if you want to tip somebody on video in the Philippines who's taking your order. Oh, dude, I mm. would totally tip a Filipino on the other side of the world before I would <laughs> tip the guy right across from me. A new restaurant chain in New York City is outsourcing the staff to the Philippines using screens and hostesses on Zoom calls instead of in-person employees to greet customers. Dude, if you have to pay $20, $25 an hour for fast food... It's called San San Ramen and Chicken, and I guess they're popping up up in New York City, and their employees at the front of the house, they're on a Zoom video screen, and they're in the Philippines taking your order, and they want you to tip somebody on a video screen? Mm. Get out of here! Can they even use the money in the Philippines? I mean, yeah, sure. You use dollars almost everywhere. Get out of here. Yeah, it's authentic mm. Japanese ramen and fried chicken, and their customer service people are on a Zoom video screen in the Philippines. Right, if I were ordering yeah, Asian food from somebody in Asia, I would feel a lot better about tipping them. Well, listen, if it's a Japanese ramen and Japanese fried chicken place, then why aren't why don't you have your people in uh, Japan? How about that? All right, then the second tipping story. The second tipping story, this is nuts. Because of the eclipse, a woman tipped wildly at a restaurant because she thought that the rapture was happening on Monday. This woman thought that because of the eclipse, and a lot of people did, I, you know, doot, you know little, uh, where's my, uh, where's my little, uh, there, there it is. So you had a, a number of people that thought that the world was ending on Monday because of the eclipse. Guess what? We had an eclipse back in 2017, and we're still here. Uh, we, we, had, we had an eclipse on Monday. We're still here. I truly believe we'll still be here in 2045 when Tampa has a 100% total eclipse. We're going to be in totality in Tampa Bay on August 12th of 2045 right here. Listen to this story. Last weekend, this is on, this is on uh, a Reddit sure. gr- group. Crazy rapture tipper woman has returned and demanded a refund on her tips. Last weekend at the restaurant that I work at, a woman tipped me three hundred dollars, convinced that the rapture was imminent on Monday, April eighth. Here's where it gets even more bizarre. A few days later, she returns and tips my coworker a whopping $777. Fast forward to today, she's back, adamant that her tips were somehow fraudulent and that we tampered with them. Her claims of fraud are literally impossible. We bring the credit card reader to the table, and it's the guest who decides the tip amount by either pressing a preset option or or entering a custom one before hitting pay. That's exactly what she did, so it's physically impossible for us to manipulate the tip amounts. Both my coworker and I have already received our tips with our paychecks, and we obviously have to pay income taxes on them. Returning the money to her at this point is a literal impossibility since we don't actually have all the money. Can you imagine? This this lady thought the world was going to end on April 8th, so... In the lead up, tips these two servers at this restaurant a crap load of money. The world did not end, and then she rolls in. <laughs> this is like an episode of Seinfeld. She rolls in yesterday on Tuesday, wanting her money back mm. and saying that she was defrauded out of the tip money. That's funny. What mm. the bleep? Give me a break. All right, I addressed this first thing this morning. I experienced something yesterday for the first time. This is, I think I came out of the box with this. I think this was very, it might have been the first segment this morning. I experienced for the first time yesterday 
The Fester, why do you keep clearing your throat so right into got, the microphone? Oh, I, I just got doused with soap in my mouth. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit out of sorts right, right now. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My hands smell like a bubble bath. My mouth yeah, tastes like you know soap in Roxanne's you know, hand. You know what? The soap, mm-hmm. the shower gel smell in this studio is so bad. There's no way that I'm way. tasting the smell. Yeah, it's, it's, seriously, it's everywhere. It's in my mouth. You've, you've, uh, oh, rocks. You've uh, wrecked the studio today. Yeah, with proud your, of it. with your little demonstration. Mm-hmm. All right, I addressed this earlier this morning, and this is crazy. I was on 275 northbound, and just before Hillsboro. All right, you're heading 275 north, just before Hillsboro. That ridiculous <laughs> jog in the road where it like jars and jolts to the left. This is the first time, I mean, a car to the left of me almost crashed into me yesterday. I'm bringing back this phenomenal, this gorgeous uh, Audi uh, uh, SQ8, uh, which uh, I, I drove for, uh, you know, uh, the weekend and, and uh, yesterday and Tuesday. I'm bringing the Audi loaner back because, you know, I'm doing commercials now. You know, for domestics, I do Veterans Ford. You want a great Ford deal, you go to <laughs> Veterans Ford. Uh, for imports, I'm endorsing the Morgan import motor cars of Audi Tampa, Porsche Tampa, and Maserati Tampa. I'm bringing back the the Audi yesterday, and suddenly it's like, oh my God, what is going on here? It's like... In the middle of the interstate, they put a left turn. Yeah. <laughs> it's and, a very, very sharp, aggressive. Oh, my God. Un- unexpectedly dramatic turn. To curve. the left, all the lanes suddenly go like a 45 angle, a 45 degree angle to the left. But then you have to go back to the right. And then you got to go jag back. I mean, who did this? Why? It is crazy. <laughs> They've made a couple. It is dangerous. Yeah. F dot. I, I would like to add an L. <laughs> F D O L T. F dolt. I mean, what, I mean uh, who does? Who did this? How many accidents have there been? How many accidents? I was almost bashed. I I took the jog well, uh, and I was able to adapt because I'm driving this nimble, really nice uh, Audi SQ8 from uh, Audi Tampa. But, I mean, can you imagine I bring the car back and the whole side is bashed in because of this crazy new jug on 275 at Hillsboro? It'll buff out. <laughs> oh, no. mm-hmm. This car comes into my lane and must have missed me by uh, an inch and a half. Wow. But there is going to be an accident. I mean, you can't have an interstate where people are driving... What is the speed limit through there now? Did they lower the speed limit? Because uh, typically it was, what, 55 or 60? Yeah, or Maybe through the jog or the construction uh, zone. It might be 45 now. But, but but people are still driving 65, 70. People are driving. And then they put this insane jog in the road. <laughs> I mean, you don't expect it. And suddenly, swerve, you know? Yeah. Very dangerous. That mm. is not good. And I was up there, I drove up maybe, what, uh, two weeks earlier? A week and a... I, I, was up th- I was up there a couple of weeks ago. Wait a minute. I was up there, I think, last week. I don't know if that... Jo- so, Fester, you drive that every day. I think it was in the last week that I saw the overhead sign, the the, the, the digital board. Oh, like the new said, traffic pattern or something? New traffic pattern yeah. before Hillsborough N- Avenue. N- new insane erratic... Uh, I mean, just, I mean, it's like a schizophrenic traffic pattern. Yeah. It ought to say, accident causing lane changes ahead. I hmm. got caught up in both changes last week. One day of two lanes now forced off the interstate for at MLK. You got forced off the road? <laughs> I got, well, you know how they have like the dedicated exit lanes? Oh my God, they I have, can't. Roxanne, you've really destroyed this studio today. Well, yeah, it's really, then, you oh. know, it's happened before. Would you rather have the smell of a dead rat or would you rather have baths? Oh, you know, you're going to throw me under the bus now? <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, the dead rat was two years yeah, ago. For all, uh, you know what? We just, <laughs> she always brings up the dead rat. <laughs> we just got rid of that smell in, in early January. <laughs> all right, so Fester. Yes. I mean, you notice this because Fester, you get off at what? Beers? Yes, the beers. Fester, and by the way, most people say bears. Yes. But apparently, the beers family 
once called Fester and said, it's beer. I was saying bear ass. Yeah. And uh, he's the guy who got really pissed. He's yeah. like, listen, we'll take you out to the groves and kill you. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> But yeah, so there's a very dramatic, and people are all, people are listening to the morning show, driving on that hell of a curve oh, right now. It is hellacious. So if, if, just warning: if you're on 275 North and you've not experienced this yet, just before the Hillsboro exit, 275 North, they have this new crazy jog where all lanes just suddenly jolt to the left. You want to go on a free roller coaster ride, kids? Yeah, there you go. Hop in the car. We're going to go in the interstate because it jerks you back and then forth, and it's unexpected. That's some crazy, crazy stuff. Hey, this is really interesting. Did you see that the NCAA women's basketball game handily beat the men's championship game with Purdue and UConn in the ratings? Oh, that's awesome. Good. Millions more. They were better games. The NCAA Women's Championship game crushed the men's game in the TV ratings by millions. So Monday's game, which, uh, why do they have it on two networks? So the men's game was on TNT and TBS. Why yeah. do they, they do that? Why is it on two channels? The- Sometimes they offer a different kind of commentary. They do that a lot. They do yeah. that for soccer games. Yeah, too. Like yeah, Monday yeah. Night Football's on a couple different networks. I mean, yeah, they do it a lot. They offer different packages depending on how you want to view it. I got into a fight with Michelle because uh, we were watching the championship game, and uh, I said, I want to watch it on TNT. She said, no, I want to watch it on TBS. I said, no, TNT, TBS, TNT. Mm. So, when ESPN yeah. does the college football championship right. game, it's on like six networks. So and- here's the deal. The men's game drew an average of 14.8 million viewers, but for Sunday's women's game on ABC and ESPN, uh, South Carolina and Iowa with, of course, Caitlin Clark, her final collegiate game. Caitlin Clark uh, with Iowa, they lost to South Carolina, 18.7 million. Wow. So the, the women drew about four. Four million more homes than the men. What do you think about that, Caitlin Clark? Huh? She's pretty good. But wait a minute. Yeah. But wait. The women got 99% less TV money. Can you believe? Listen to this. Of course. The NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament Final Sunday drew more viewers than the men's final for the first time in <clears throat> history. Uh, obviously, Caitlin Clark was a big part of that. But the TV money is not reflected. The women's tournament, th- this is crazy. The TV money, the, the TV rights for the women, $6.5 million for the women's tournament. For the men's tournament, $873 million, almost a billion. So what? The what? What is the disparity is unbelievable. Well, yeah. well, listen, also yeah. like women's One soccer. Year. Soccer's also, the worst. Yeah, also like women's soccer, men's soccer. That You know, the, the whole big uh, uprising about uh, equality and pay and the women's soccer deal did get better. And it should have. Right. Yeah, but nothing compared to the $200 million a year the guys are getting. Listen, Messi. So, listen the, the women's tournament has one year of it being super popular. Next year, you know, let's see if it holds up. Of course, you're going to naysay it. Let's see if it holds up. Have you ever watched a women's basketball game before this year? Every year I'm watching it. Which favorite team? Favorite team. Who do you root for? Oh, UConn. In women's hoops. Purdue. In women's hoops. Do- Duke. In women's hoops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like Duke. I like Purdue. I like LSC. LSC. The, the women's teams of those oh, schools. I like Kadonka. Who is it? Kadonka? Kadonka, Kadonka State? G- G- Gazungas? Gazunga? Oh, G- G- Gonza- Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Oh, I thought it was Gonzaga. All right. 845 at the MJ Morning Show. Don't forget the Cash Kitty's back at 10. So shortly after we end the MJ Morning Show today, the Cash Kitty is back and you're shot to win a thousand bucks, eight a.m., ten a.m., twelve noon, three, and five p.m. There was a texting issue with only some listeners, and if you had problems texting, that issue has been resolved, and we apologize for any inconvenience that it may have caused. Eight forty-six in just minutes. 
if you get angry, if you get really, really angry, is this a way to soothe and calm your nerves? If you get ticked, pissed, I'm going to tell you what some people claim is a surefire way to get rid of your anger. That's coming up. Also, who wants to be a billionaire? And is there a predisposal with a particular issue or something that we all have? Is there something that increases the chances of you becoming a billionaire? Because a lot of the billionaires fall into this category. Are you in the category? I'll explain coming up in just a minute. What are you laughing at? What is it, Asperger's syndrome? Uh, that, no, hang, hang <laughs> on. Just, just stand by. Okay. All right, it's coming up in just a bit. And uh, do I have time? I think I have time. And then uh, I saw, I got to take calls on this. I saw the craziest lawn care sign. You know, here in Florida, the lawn care guys are all over our neighborhoods, you know, mowing lawns, keeping people's yards looking nice. I saw the absolute craziest lawn care sign with a lawn care company. They put up a sign in the road. It is insane. I've never seen I took a picture. And I'll tell you the story when we get back in minutes here on the MJ Morning Show on Q105. So you do not want to move uh, right now. All right. If you're looking for a car. If you are looking for a sexy phenomenon.
almost 9 o'clock at the MJ Morning Show. And, of course, we highly appreciate it when you bring the MJ Morning Show into the office with you. If you get to work, you don't have to stop listening to us. Imagine the quality MJ Morning Show entertainment that you miss if you stop when you get to work. Bring us in. Listen to us on your phone. You got all the apps. You got the... Tune in app, the Odyssey app, the My Q105 app, the iHeart app. Just search for Q105 Tampa Bay and you can listen to us on your phone, on your computer, on your desk at work. Just go to mjmorningshow.com, red button, upper right hand corner. It says listen live. Click on the red button and we'll start playing out of your computer speakers. Or listen conventionally on the regular radio on 104.7 FM. 104.7 FM, as you know it, is Q105, so keep listening. Q105. You got it? 104.7 FM is... Tampa Q105. Yeah. The best music all summer long. Oh, hey. Q105. It, it's, it's only spring. Oh, hot, hot. So, I want to know, is this a overly dramatic, over-the-top lawn care sign? Now, I posted this on my Instagram, and you know, I did this days ago. I just haven't gotten around to it. So, the bulk of our audience doesn't follow me on Instagram. I don't know why. Uh, all hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands that encounter our show every week, everyone ought to be following me on Instagram. So if you're not, give me a follow, and you would have seen this days ago. My Instagram is Certified MJ Radio, and you'll need to go to Certified MJ Radio to take a look at this. So I moved this thing up. I It was kind of buried a little further down, but I just pinned it. So this particular item I'm about to talk about is now the number one lead item on my Instagram at Certified MJ Radio. <laughs> Fester, would you like to describe <laughs> what you are looking at in my neighborhood? All right. Uh, Looks like a, maybe like a grassy median here, and then there's a big pickup truck with like a lawn trailer, and then a, a cone, like a traffic cone with a sign that says, Vehicular homicide will ruin your life. <laughs> He, please pass slowly. All right. So this lawn guy, I'm I'm doing my walk in the neighborhood, right? And the lawn care guy, you know, I'm doing my you know, two mile circuit, and the lawn care guy is doing someone's yard and adjacent grassy knolly areas, and he's got a black Chevy pickup. He's towing one of those big enclosed trailers, and you can see he's got like some kind of palm artwork on the trailer. I don't even know the name of the lawn care company. And then he's got a pink traffic cone with a sign stuck into the hole in the top of the cone. It's a big red sign with white letters that reads, Vehicular Homicide Will Ruin Your Life. Please pass slowly. He's not wrong. All right, listen. <laughs> Is that a little overly dramatic? Maybe just... Lawn care, work ahead, please drive safely. Uh, lawn care in progress, please slow down. Do you really need to jolt somebody with vehicular homicide will ruin your life? Yeah, let's talk about how <sighs> vehicular homicide would end the gardener's life. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, my life would, you know, suck for a little while. Here's would be over. That's awful. But MJ, he's, he's hammering the point. I think I was in Missouri. Right, and I was driving through Missouri, and they had road workers there, and the signs said from the state, "Hit a worker, fifteen years in jail." You know, right. slow down. Oh, oh, yeah, listen, let them live. I, you know, and I'm like, I, I remember those. Yeah, and I'm or, like, or what is the other sign? Uh, give them a break. Yeah, B R A K E instead of B R E A K, and it's not like you know, give them a broken femur or something. No, give the highway workers a break. Slow down. And driving through a neighborhood, you know, and listen, any neighborhood you live in, people are whizzing down your street. I don't, I mean, I'm sorry, driving quickly down your street. They're whizzing. They got to, they, they're just, they're 
defecating their wisdom right, oh, on, right I, on your street. I usually yeah. save that for yeah. the palm tree. All right. But, yeah, uh, people are flying down your yeah. street. And, you know, there's these lawn crews, you know, in my neighborhood. Mm. They, they, they park on the street hey, because they have the truck and the trailer. Hey, Professor, I see it all the time. You know, I'm, I'm walking 20 miles a week in my neighborhood. I would say I walk more. I'm out and about on the streets in South Tampa. More than ninety-eight percent of people, ninety. Because how many people walk twenty miles a week in their neighborhood? Homeless Ooh. nomads. <laughs> That's it. It's homeless nomads the, and MJ. The point is not many. I'm walking twenty miles a week. Wow. And I see, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I, 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 I agree. You know, but do you need to put up a sign? Vehicular homicide will ruin your life. Please pass slowly past the lawn care truck. I think that might be a little too much. I think it might be a little over the top. You know, just the you know lawn care in progress. Please be careful. I don't know. Nobody listens to I'll that. I'll tell you, why don't you put up pictures of, like, bloodied corpses then? That's next. <laughs> oh. It's like, when did I see, like, cig- cigarette companies were putting pictures of black lung yeah. on the side of the uh, cigarettes? Look, in England. We've got yeah. lawn guys calling in now. Uh, also, hey, listen, if you want to weigh in on this, do you think that it's a little over the top? Vehicular homicide will ruin your life. Please pass slowly, Mr. Lawn Guy. All right, Jimmy's in Brandon. Jimmy, hi, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hey, MJ. Hey. How are you this day? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you for phoning in. Go ahead. Yeah, man, uh, I listen all the time. And and, uh, and I, when I drive and pull up to a place where we're going to work, I make sure that there's plenty of room, that, that our truck and trailer is not going to be impeding, you know, other commerce. So, and I tell my guys, if your foot's on blacktop, someone's going to hit you. So always look left, right before you back, because our guys, when they edge and blow. Oh, they- man, they got the ear protectors on, and they got their uh, their machine going, and you, you don't hear traffic. You got, you got, yeah, you got headsets on. If you're going to step backwards into traffic, cars don't expect that. Oh, yeah. You know, we were blowing. You're like, oh, I have to back up a little bit. Whoop. You just take two steps into traffic, you're going to end up a hood ornament. Jeez. So what do you think about the sign, Jimmy? You. Do you think the sign, and listen, I concur. I want all lawn guys and women, I want all lawn crews to be safe. If you're working in a neighborhood, I think it's rude as hell that people drive fast. Oh, and the point right. I was trying to make, uh, Jimmy, was that I'm walking 20 yeah. miles an hour. Uh, I'm walking 20 miles a Whoa, week. 20 uh, miles an hour. I'm, I'm walking 20 miles a week in my neighborhood. And, ass. you know, the people that the people that will drive by me, uh, you know, in, in a 25-mile-an-hour zone, the people that will drive by me within feet of me, you know, driving, you know, 45 miles an hour next to me, it's insane. So I, I, I fully, I fully respect the need for you know people to slow down. You know, I have other lawn companies in my neighborhood, yeah. Jimmy, that put traffic yeah. cones out, not with like vehicular homicide signs, but yeah. they put out the traffic cones next to their trailers, which I think is a clever, yeah. good thing. I'll tell you this much: everybody I know that's ever put up a sign or a cone has left that sign or a cone somewhere. Yeah, you have to remember to pick it up oh, at the yeah. end of the I'm job. I'm sure this guy's sign. I'm sure this guy's got three or four signs, and they're probably scattered from here to Tampa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, yeah. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, are you having a conversation with somebody else? No, I was. I, a customer came out while I was talking. Well, tell the customer <laughs> to shut his trap. You're on the radio, on the radio man. Yeah. Jimmy, don't talk to other people. Jimmy, Listen, your career in radio <laughs> is going to be know, about but, as successful but, as mine in law. You know, when one of my guys comes out, and he's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'm just standing here talking to myself. <laughs> I have a headset on. I've got my phone." Yeah. I've got my Jimmy, phone talks to himself. Headset. Hey, and I'm walking around. Hey, Jimmy, thank you for calling in. I really appreciate. Well, but well, we asked you the question: Do you think hey. that? Do you think that the sign that reads "vehicular homicide will ruin your life"? Do you think that's over the top? That is over the top. That's that's just being a little bit. He's probably almost been run down. But yeah, it's a little over the top. All right, thanks, Jimmy. Uh, I would like to see maybe please slow down. Lawn care in progress. I don't know if you need a sign that says. Slow down. If you hit me, it could sever my limbs, cause me to bleed out, stain your street. There might be brain matter splattered all over your front bumper. Is that guy's sign going to read that next? Or if you 
get in an accident, you might be pinned in between two cars, and the only way you're going to stay alive is if they keep the cars together. But if they pull the cars apart, your body's going to fall apart. You're going to die. So they have to call your family to come over and see you before yeah. they do it, just like that yeah. one movie. Yeah. <gasps> Slow down, or you're going to pin me between two vehicles and turn my torso into spaghetti squash. Yeah. yeah. You know? That's a really wordy sign, Ruggie. Yeah. Was it that? This, what, what movie was that when the the woman got in a car accident and they're like, "Call your family," and then we have to take the car away and you'll die. Wow. Okay. okay, I don't know what that is. So, uh, hey, let me grab Tim in Clearwater. Tim, you're on the MJ Morning Show. <laughs> Hi, Tim. Good morning, MJ. Hey, Tim. Yes, I'm in the lawn business, and um, yeah, the, the uh, sign is a little off, but um, I do understand. That he's, you know, probably feels, um, you know, <laughs> that he could get hit. Um, I have a lawn service and employee guy, and I use a cone, and it says uh, drive safely, workers in the area. Yeah, see, I think that's, that's cool. That's not effective. Yeah, but uh, you know, clearly the guy's trying to make a statement and, you know, make an impactful memory here. I mean, if you're trying to get someone's attention— yeah, vehicular homicide will ruin my day. Please pass slowly by the lawn care truck. Yeah, you got my attention. Hey, thanks for the call, yeah. Tim. I, I highly appreciate you listening. All right, great show, guys. Thank thanks. you. Let me grab Sean in Treasure Island. Sean, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Hello. Hey, MJ. Love your show. Black Sand, you're the best. Foggy um, and uh, Fester, you guys are cool. Anyhow, okay. thanks, um, uh, I, do, uh, I do commercial recycling all throughout Pinellas County, Tampa, for a company called Connex Recycling. Uh -huh. People don't slow down. It's the new law that it's been around forever, but the new law now states that anyone on the side of the road with their four ways on where the vehicle is broken down, they are present. You have to slow down and move over 25 miles an hour below this posted speed limit. It is the law. Yep. You know what I see all the time, and I want to kind of capture it on video to make my own little PSA, but then people say, MJ, you shouldn't be holding your phone and videoing while you're driving. But when no. when I drive home and I get on 275 northbound, I go over the Howard Franklin Bridge to the Tampa side, when there are either road rangers with the flashing lights on assisting disabled motorists or even troopers on the side of the road, or the construction crews, or tow trucks, whatever. The folks that will stay in the right lane and fly by at 70 miles an hour, instead of slowing down to at least 20 miles under the posted speed, or moving over, that's the best thing to do, move to the next lane, but the people that still drive by at highway speed, it's like, even before the laws went into effect, uh, it's just common right. sense. Well, you know, the, the thing is, people don't understand. You got to put them in in your in your perspective. You know, if they're on the side of the road, they have they have equipment in their ears. They're supposed to. They can't hear. They only got their eyes. Their back is turned to you. You know, they they don't know you're coming up behind them until you get hit. I've been almost hit several times doing my lawn care business. So it's 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 just it's horrible. But people have got to understand because they are issuing tickets. To anybody, and there will be, you know, people setting up, uh, you know, traps on the cops, and then you will get a ticket because it is a three-point violation. And if you're a CDL driver and you don't do it, it's a five-point violation, and you and you could lose your license for 30 or 60 days, especially if it's happened more than once. As no, well as not no having issue. your phone in your ear. You got to yep. have a Bluetooth. No issue with that. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate the call. All right, buddy. Thank, hey, thank LCAP. Hey, can I say something about yeah, LCAP? Yeah. I know you love the place. I love it. I do my advertising there. Thornton Lawn Care. I'm sorry, I just had to throw that in there, but I love El Cap. Thanks. Got Thank a place mat that you eat. But it's a great place. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate you phoning in. Uh, I'm a burger fan. Dale in Lakeland. Dale, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Welcome. Hey, MJ. How's it going? Good uh, well. Listen, I drive for a living. I drive every single day, five days a week. Uh, my biggest problem is. Uh, everybody is on their phone. Um, the, the guy, the lawn care guy that posted the sign, I'm okay with it. I see people all the time on their phone, uh, smashing into people. You know, the people that ride their bicycles in the bike lane, it's legal and, you know, more power to you if that's what you want to do. But I see it as a death trap. It's just a matter of time before these guys get killed by somebody on their phone. I Just last week, a person put their Honda Civic in the back of a semi-trailer at a stoplight, and the car was going probably 40 miles an hour. The back of the 
tractor trailer was in the driver's seat. I, oh my god! Because the person was on the phone and not paying attention and drove right into the back of a tractor trailer because they were on their phone. Exactly. I oh. see it all the time. People on their phones. And the sad thing is, I see other guys driving tractor trailers that are on their phones too. You know, the other thing, Dale, is uh, I see it all the time and. Uh, in the neighborhood, I still don't like it, but, you know, in a 25-mile-an-hour residential street, it's much better than people on the regular roads, and that's those that are on golf carts. And I'll see people driving on busy roads in South Tampa. You'll have kids, uh, a six- or eight-person giant golf cart, and they're driving around with kids hanging off, and they're on West Shore or Kennedy or Lois. I'm like, what are you doing with the trucks and the cars, if your golf cart gets hit on these roads, it's going to be horrific. And that drives me nuts as well. Dale, thanks for the call. Let me grab uh, eh, one or two more here, and i got to move on. What time is it, 9.15? MJ Morning Show. If you want to see the sign that caused this entire segment, it is on my Instagram. It is the first item. I pinned it, so it's the number one item. On Instagram, go to Certified MJ Radio, which is my Instagram account, Certified MJ Radio. And the discussion is about a lawn care guy in my neighborhood that put up a sign inside a traffic cone that reads, Vehicular homicide will ruin your life. Please slow down or please pass slowly. And I, I thought, yeah, listen, slow down. Don't drive like a maniac next to the lawn dude. Don't hit him. But I thought the sign was a little over the top. You know, vehicular homicide will ruin your life. Uh, James is in Ohio. Hi, James. You're on the MJ Morning Show. Hey, how's it going, MJ? Going well. Hey, um, I think this guy has got the great idea because if you see a normal sign, you're not going to remember it. That's right. If you see something like this stuck in a pink cone, yeah. it's going to stand out. Oh, it's an attention yeah. getter. There's no doubt about it. So you guys should stick a pink cone in the middle of the freeway and put an MJ Morning Show sign in it. Yeah, to get more listeners, that's what we ought to do. All right, thank you, James. Uh, last call, Frank is a former lawn guy. Hi, Frank, you're on the MJ Morning Show. Final call on this, Andrew. Hey, uh, MJ. Hey, man, I uh, I want to give a little perspective on it. Um, uh, most people get behind the wheel. They're only thinking of one person. That's themselves. Yeah. And when you put it in words to say, hey, here's what's going to happen to you if you hit somebody on the road uh, and not paying attention, this is what's going to happen to you. You're putting it in their perspective, in their field, instead of trying to care about the person they hit, put it back in their field and say, hey, all right, you want to be selfish? Here's what's going to happen to you. Frank, well said. Thank you. Appreciate you uh, phoning in. Anyway, you want to see the sign? It's an attention getter. Absolutely. What was it uh, when I was a kid? What was it? Uh, Smokey and the Bandit? Only you can prevent forest Remember, fires. Remember, uh, what? What did you say? It wasn't it only you can prevent forest fires? I'm talking about Smokey, Smokey and the, the Bandit. Oh, that's Smokey what the bear. hell's the matter with you? Oh, 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 it's oh. not Smokey Smo the Bear. Not, not, not Smokey the Bear. Oh, he said Smokey. I no, think. no think Smokey, Reynolds. Smokey and the Bandit with Burt Reynolds. Only you. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> only you can kiss my butt. <laughs> no, no, no. Wow. Smokey and the Bandit. Jackie Gleason playing the sheriff in pursuit of the bandit. Remember, didn't he kick? Uh, they, they, he pulled some kid over, kicked the kid in the ass on the side of the road, and said, "That was an attention getter." Remember? So the, yeah. the the vehicular homicide thing is that it's Smokey and the and the it's Smokey and the Bear, not Smokey the Smokey and the Bandit, not Smokey and the. My apologies uh, to uh, Jackie Gleason. Oh yeah, and, and you know uh, the theme song that they used on. All of the Smokey that only you could prevent firefighters uh, commercials, all the Smokey the Bear, all those fire safety commercials, you know what the song they used on those, right? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Uh, oh, they used this. Totally loud. Here we go. He's pounding down, loaded up and trucking. Are we going to do what they say can be done? Oh, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm East Bowser, watch your bandit run. Oh, 
Oh man, was that Jerry Lee? Was that Jerry Lee Lewis? Right? I'm that sorry, was, Jer- not Jerry. Uh, Jerry uh, Reed. Jerry Reed, not Jerry Lee Lewis. Sorry. Yeah. Is he still alive? Jerry Reed is not. So hold on a minute, Smokey. So Jerry Reed is gone. Burt Reynolds is gone. Right? How about Sally Field? Is she still, is she still alive? Barely. Sally no, I, Field. I saw her at the Oscars. She's alive. Oh, Jackie Gleason. Yeah, he's he's, he's got a new sitcom coming out in the fall. <laughs> I don't. I think yeah, he's Norton. <laughs> Uh, oh, Fester found the attention getter scene. Hold on. Hang on. Does this have language that I'm, I can? I'm looking at the text. Oh, I'm looking at the, aud- the, the written out text. Yeah. And it doesn't have anything bad. All right. Or, all right. Well, I got my finger on the dump button just in case. All right. All right. Run it. Here's the scene. Yeah, he pulls over these two guys. That's an attention getter. <laughs> 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 there we go. It's the scene. All right. 9 20 at the MJ Morning Show. I mentioned billionaires earlier. Oh, yeah. The quality they have. Yeah. What? You, you said something about they all share this quality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So there's something with billionaires. I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad. Can I point something out? I do not want to be a billionaire. Oh. I, I do not. Just a. A just... couple of dozen millionaire would be fine for you, huh? I, I don't want to be a billionaire. A couple I... more endorsements, you're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Froggy, get ready to have another conniption probably next week. Well, I'm, sure. uh, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. All right. So I do not want to be a billionaire. Let me be very clear. I have no desire to be a billionaire. I am very happy where I am. I do not want to be a billionaire. I think the, you know, the whole thing, more money, more problems. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But- there is something, there's a, a certain trait that billionaires share. And Roxanne, this is going to, woo, this is in your wheelhouse because okay. it's, it's all Zodiac related. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I like this stuff. You know that. Yeah. You know, it's the inflatable rafts, the Zodiacs. Yep. Yep. No, mm-hmm. I'm kidding. Uh, Zodiac as in the whole astrological. astrological exactly. So apparently... A large percentage of billionaires, this is an analysis, the birth dates of the world's top billionaires find that over a third share the same three astrological signs. Okay, okay. You want me to guess them? In a minute, right okay. after right after the break. I'm, right. I'm doing like that. I, I promise yeah. I'm not going to Google. I promise. Uh, yeah, do not. In fact, hold your hands in the air. Uh, We'll take a quick break. We're right back. What astrological signs make it more likely for you to be a billionaire? Because most billionaires, or, or I should say the highest percentage of billionaires, share these astrological signs. Hold on to that thought. That, and if you are angry, we're going to tell you how to reduce your anger. Also, uh... I like the fact that we're getting serious about organized uh, retail theft in the state and porch pirates. Uh, I'm very thrilled with the uh, legislation that's going to go into effect here in Florida because I, I hate porch pirates. I hate these uh, marauding bands of thieves that rip off uh, stores and jack up our prices. And uh, Florida's taken action. So we'll tell you about that all next. Don't move. All in the final segment of the MJ Morning Show coming up in minutes. And I have a very important notice for your next event.
Might be it. I had a listener hit me up a couple of days ago via email. Hey, MJ, man, uh, at about 9.30, you were getting ready to do the last segment of the show, and you, you played a rejoin bumper, and I love it. They even used the terminology. You played this rejoin bumper, and I, I loved it. It was a little jazzy, and, and I'm like, well, I, I have like 50 different rejoin bumpers. Can you be a little more specific? And this might be it, I'm thinking. This might be it. And uh, if you are listening, this is uh, called Cheerleader. Yeah, the, the song is Cheerleader. And and this is uh, a little, like, instrumental extended version that I put oh, together. Yeah. That smell. What? Oh, yeah. She rock, just walked no. by with a poison pasta. Yeah, Rock. If you missed the poison pasta on the show earlier today... Oh my God! Take a look at MJTV. Uh, listen, you got to watch MJTV. And then Fester's licking Roxanne's fingers with cream all over it. Oh my God! Oh, that's yeah. going to be an issue. Yeah, that's an HR issue right there. With Something's it, going on there. Getting poisoned by coworkers yeah. is not any good. Doug's going to punch your lights out. Good luck. Charlie. All right, nine thirty-two at the <laughs> nine thirty-two at the MJ Morning Show here on Q one hundred and five. So billionaires. I, like I said, I have no desire to be a billionaire. Uh, I don't think about that. The old song. Who did that song? I want to be a billionaire. Was that? Was that Bruno Mars? Was Keith that, Urban. Was that that was not Keith Urban? <laughs> was it? Was it Bruno Mars that did? Bruno San Martino. I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad. Oh, song sucks. Yeah, it was. It doesn't suck. It's, he has way better songs. Yeah, maybe so. It but was I want to be a billionaire. And Bruno. So and Bruno freaking Mars. Bad. Uh, I do not want to be a billionaire. I have no desire to be a billionaire. However. Mm. Uh, research is in, and the majority of billionaires share just one, two, three signs. So there are three astrological signs which have the highest density of billionaires. 
And Roxanne thinks that she's all smart over here on the whole. And she swore that she was not going to look this no, up. No, I'm just trying to use my my basic astrological how, knowledge. However, you did disappear. You guys all disappeared during the commercial break. So that's, I, our, I, that's what we do. But yeah, I don't, we're going to stick but, around and listen to you read your deals? I, I don't know. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> God, the jealousy is oozing from your poor. It's just I, unfairness. Well, no, 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 Froggy. I have cultivated almost every one Nobody of my cares. live endorsements. Nobody cares. You've Nobody been, cares. you've been here. No, you care. You've been in this market for forty something years. You've got forty more. something. Right. You, listen, twenty something, dude. No, how old are you? Forty three, four. You've been in this market. You've lived for forty three years, or whatever you are. Oh, okay. You yeah, have I connections. You bring some clients and. Oh, endorse. is that how it you're, works? Yeah, you're just waiting for sales to do what? Just drop them in your crotch. You'll suck it. Go, go, suck it right up. Go <laughs> grab your own endorsements and bring them to the MJ I got Morning other Show. Other stuff to sell. Endorsements work on Solutions. the MJ. Do you know? Let me tell you right now. Banco overhead doors. Banco, I, I need to meet with them, by the way. I, I well, I'll hook you up. Good. I've dealt with Banco. I've done endorsements on and off for Banco for years. I've used Banco overhead doors many times at my house. I got them on the air February 1. So Banco has been on the air for two months, and they already renewed for the entire year. That's how much uh, the MJ Morning Show endorsements work. You t- all of our clients, they love our endorsements. They work. So, Froggy, you I got one endorsement t- two years ago. It was for Broken Wieners. All right. And that's all. Oh, that, that was the that, last one. Oh, that is true. <laughs> you did do a broken wiener endorsement. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, endorsements work. I mean, that's the real measure of success. <laughs> the ratings. <laughs> you know, the uh, the real measure is uh, that my endorsement clients are thrilled uh, that we're like one of the largest, if not the largest, lead generators for the businesses that I endorse. That is that is what success is all about. All right. So. Yes. Roxanne, you mm-hmm. think you know what three signs have the highest percentage of billionaires, correct? I, yes. I, okay, I'm making a list right now of who it is and who it isn't, okay? No, no, just give me the three astrological I, signs. But I have to go through my whole knowledge. No, oh, you God. don't. I, no, you don't. No. I, I got a lot of other things to do. Okay, Leo, uh, what, what signs? Leo, Libra, and Taurus are the most likely to spend billions of dollars. No, 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 no. I, that's not what I want. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I want to know. She's what, just giving you other examples. Yeah. Right, billionaires are fall into what three signs predominantly? Okay, okay I'm gonna number I'm gonna one. Stay in the. I'm gonna say that they're mostly born in the first three months of the year. So I'm gonna go with Capricorn. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Pisces. No. Uh, okay. Okay, Pisces is right. Ooh. Ooh, I'm a Pisces, and the reason I know this, the reason I I assumed that that was on the list, is because Pisces. Or like Steve Jobs is was a Pisces is a Pisces. Well, he's no longer with us, but uh, you know a lot. Where, of- oh, when did that happen? What's Steve Jobs? Dead? <laughs> Steve All Jobs right. dead? All right. Okay. So I do not know of a handful of Pisces billionaires. And just give give me the three. So that's, Capricorn that's Capricorn is wrong. Okay. Pisces is correct. Uh, I'm going to say the first half of the year. I'm going to say Aries. Nope. Uh, Aquarius. Uh, Scorpio. Uh, <laughs> then I suck at this. What do I know about astrology? Nothing. All right. Thirty three percent plus of all billionaires are Libra, okay. Pisces, okay. and Taurus. Okay. Those okay. are the and three. creepy. Well, well, I did list Libra and Taurus of my on my list of spending billions of dollars. They they like money and like stuff. Can now, I ask you a question, Roxanne, real yes. quick? Mm-hmm. Not to intrude. Yeah. Is your friend Derek Jordan a billionaire? Who Derek uh, Jordan? Jordan? Derek Jeter, or whatever okay. his name. Is. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was just I was just watching a Michael Jordan video. <laughs> uh, is he a billionaire? I, that- I don't. I would just say Google it. I, I don't. I don't. MJ, do you think he is? No, I don't think. I so. don't. I do not think But that, you know, I, I find that most billionaires become creepy. Uh, look at Vince McMahon. Look at Jeffrey Epstein. Look at yeah. Puff Daddy. But wait a minute. Oh, but Puff Daddy wasn't a billionaire. Or is oh, a billionaire? Yeah, but uh, was. Derek is Jeter is singing a song right now. I want to be a billionaire so freaking bad. Yeah. He's yeah. doing well for himself. <laughs> I'm sure he's doing, just he, he's doing Jeep Wagoneer commercials. All right? My cousin John yeah. Davidson. He's billionaire. No, he's not. That's right. No, he's not. All right, but interestingly... Two of the top richest people in the world are not a Libra, a Pisces, or a Taurus. Jeff Bezos is a Capricorn. Oh, well, that was that was my guess. But 
it's not the highest percentage. Right. But gotcha. but Jeff Bezos happens to be a Capricorn, and then you have Elon Musk is a Cancer. Yes, I am he, definitely he, a Cancer. Yes, Everything I is. touch. Yes, he is. I <laughs> Everything I, I do. I agree. He's, he's a Cancer, all right. Cancers are moody. Uh, you look at the Ralph Lauren. Do you, do you say I always Ralph. heard I always heard people say La, uh, Ralph Lauren, and then it became Ralph Lauren. So is it Ralph Lauren or is it Ralph Lauren? What is the proper pronunciation? Anyway, he's a Libra, uh, a Pisces. You know the, the the rich dude, the the whole the Louis Vuitton guy. You know yeah. uh, L E uh, L V M H. Yeah. What is that? It's uh, Louis Vuitton Moet mm -hmm. Hennessy. Is that? It sounds. Yeah. What are you talking sure. about? LVMH. What is that? The, the Louis Vuitton. No, I never heard Moet, of it. Moet. All right, Fessor, what, bring up, what does LVMH stand for? I think it's Louis, I know the Louis Vuitton is LV, and I think it's uh, Moet and Hennessy, the luxury brands company, and uh, this uh, French dude and his family, they uh, they control the, the thing. Yeah, and, you're right. It's Moet Hennessy. Yeah, oh, so I am right. Okay. And uh, he's a Pisces, mm -hmm. uh, billionaire Bernard Arnault. Yeah, we can yeah. we can do quite well if we don't get in our own way. Yeah, let's see. Bernard Arnault. Oh, you got uh, Mark uh, Zuckerberg is a Taurus. That's right. Uh, anyway, so there there you go. So he does fall in into one of the three. Is there any billionaires in Tampa? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Really? We got oh, a bunch. Yeah. yeah, we got yeah, a we bunch do. of them. Yeah. We got numerous billionaires. Tony Little. Besides Tony Little. <laughs> The uh, uh, no, there are there are there are. I know several billionaires uh, in Tampa. I know. Ho hopefully, pores. hopefully they're not offended that I have no desire to be a billionaire. I'm sure they'll be all right. Yeah, they're like, oh, good. MJ's not coming for us. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then we have this. Are you? I ought to put this in the pile for tomorrow and do this again earlier in the show for the benefit of the early audience. Do you get angry? Do you get really? Just nail spitting, glass chucking, angry. The things just piss you off. You start exploding. You turn red. You're about to explode. If that's you, this simple little trick might fix things and help reduce or eliminate your anger. Do you know what that is? What? I think this is absolute BS. I do not think... When I get angry, if I did this, first of all, the pen wouldn't work. I'd probably have to jam the pen into the countertop and snap it in half. What? What? I'd probably get even angrier. <laughs> You're probably saying, pen, what is he talking yeah. about? EpiPen? No. <laughs> there is apparently an exercise that if you really, really angry, you write down your angry feelings. Mm-hmm. And then you ball them up and throw them away. Or, no, or, I've heard of that. Or you take your piece of paper where you write your angry feelings and you shred it. Or, you know, take a... Burn it. Take, yeah, take a lighter and burn your angry feelings. Yeah. And that's going to make your anger disappear. I, I've heard of, like, if you if you have a, a grudge or a, this, a tension between you and somebody, you write, them, you write them a letter and you get it all out. And then you never mail the letter, or you throw it away, or you never send it. Or you get a voodoo doll. Yeah. And you start poking it with pins. Duff, I was watching this diving YouTube channel of a diver. Yep. And he, his name's Dolly MD. And he found a whole bunch of voodoo dolls under a river that were, had, like, <laughs> pin needles in them and stuff. Is that a thing? You you throw pins you throw in You throw them in the river, yeah. They, really? He found a couple of them. So that's the thing. You get a voodoo doll, you stick pins in somebody... Who the voodoo doll represents, and then you throw the doll into a river. And then he found a bucket with like 20 knives in them, steak knives. Yeah. And around the steak knives were like paper, and written on the paper were the people's names oh my wrapped God. around a knife. Oh, like, and they've wow. been there for like years. Where do you see this? Dolly MD. D A L L Y M D. He's a diver. Ooh. He's the one that went on that ship before it imploded. You have to really pronunciate that P when you talk about boats. Why? What did I say? Ship. Yeah, he was the one that was on that ship. Yeah, okay. Good. That's Good. what I thought he Before said. Before it yeah. exploded. No, it's not what I thought no, no, he said. You're talking about the Titanic expedition? Yeah, yeah. He, Remember, he, uh, Julian showed you one of his videos when he went on the thing. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I that saw kid. that. Yeah, that kid finds oh, stuff all the time. Oh, yeah. I, I know who you're talking about.
Yeah, he shot a video. A really good video. He was on, he, no, he was supposed to be on, he was on the launch ship, and he was supposed to go into, what was the name of that Titanic pod that imploded? What was oh, the name of the, the yeah. Voyager? Yeah, but look it up. Not the Voyager. The submersible just, that they had? Just, yeah. just, just go. Oh, the, uh, the Crusher? Just go. It was the Oceanic? The, it wasn't called the Crusher. No, but the, crusher. the kid you're talking about, he was supposed to be on an expedition, and it got scrubbed. Titan, the Titan. Yeah, the Titan submersible. Yeah, it was too dangerous for them to go down. Well, he got lucky. Yeah, no crap. That thing would have... Because his mission got scrubbed for, what, technical issues or and whatever? And was the mission right before the one that got yeah. crushed. Oh, yeah. All right, so if you're angry, write down your anger and your thoughts on paper. Shred it, stab crumple it. it, stab it. Write it on a burn it. watermelon and stab it. Write it on the <laughs> side of somebody's house and burn it. <laughs> that would be good. And also say Goose Fraba. Goose Fraba. What? You haven't you seen that movie with Adam Sandler? No, anger nobody management? said Goose around me. <laughs> what is that, in Jumanji or something? No, it's in Anger Management. What? If I you saw the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It. Was that with, uh, like, Jack Nicholson? And Adam Sandler. Oh. I can't remember who else, but he was in Anger think- Management. He's like, Goose Raba, Goose Raba. I do that with my kids. I make my kids say that. Goose Raba? Goose Raba. Goose, how do you spell that? G-O-O-S-E-F-R-A-B-B-A. Goose Raba. Goose Raba. Mm-hmm. I say Namago. <laughs> well, we, we got to go. Not hey, Namaste. <laughs> I just want to say thanks to this show today. It was it had a nice theme to it. Thanks it was to all- the show. <laughs> You're thanking the show? You're welcome. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're welcome. It had a nice theme to it. It was very, uh, like, a sensorial tell, experience. It was right. sight, sound, taste themed. Uh, why don't you write a, <laughs> write a card? All right, Rip folks, have a, have a great hit. Then, then light it on fire. <laughs> All right, let's, let, let's get out of here. Uh, the Cash Kitty's back in 15 minutes at 10 o'clock. So Roxanne's got your next Cash Kitty keyword for your chance to win 1000 bucks. Then noon and then 3 and 5 p.m. today, the Cash Kitty every single day and your chance to win a thousand bucks each time folks have a great day we'll see you back here tomorrow on the mj morning show on q105 and let's be careful out there